You have entered the command zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. What is up, everybody? Welcome. Welcome to the Command Zone podcast. Today, you are watching slash listening to us right now. I'm one of your hosts, Jimmy Wong. Hi, I'm another of your hosts, Josh Lee Kwai. And I'm the third host, Rachel Weeks. We have three people because it is the final podcast episode of 2022. Holy moly. It's going to be a big behemoth of an episode. We're going to look back at the entire past year, and we're going to talk about a lot. Ups, downs, everything in between. If you're thinking about it, we're probably going to talk about it. And we're also going to talk a little bit about what we're going to see in 2023. But obviously, before we get into this big episode, you may be interested in magic cards. So let's hear about some ways that you can further your interest in magic cards. <laughs> I hope you're interested in magic cards if you're watching this episode. <laughs> Maybe they just like us a lot. That's possible. No, that's totally possible. We're very charming. Sure. Yeah, exactly. My Thank parents you. watch this. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> we're about to talk about a whole year of magic cards. And uh, as you'll hear us probably harp on there was a lot of product released this year if you want to pick up any of that stuff from neon dynasty all the way until the commander starter decks which just came out cardkingdom.com slash command that is the best place to go to get your magic products singles anything at all you know one of the things i love about card kingdom Mm. is their huge inventory if you've got a, a full deck list or maybe multiple deck lists if you're really ambitious and you want to get all those cards all at once from one vendor card kingdom is absolutely the best place to go they're going to send you all that stuff in one package. Often, if you order from other sites and things like that, you might get 20 different packages, in which yep. case you're off. You're often sort of waiting for those last few packages to arrive before you have your deck. It's not like that with Card Kingdom. So, cardkingdom.com slash command zone. Can't recommend them highly enough. Thanks to everybody who uh, uses that affiliate link and supports our content. Yeah, and once you have all of those cards in your hands, you're going to want to protect them. Go to ultrapro.com slash command to pick up some sleeves, pick up a playmat, deck box, protect those game pieces that you got from Card Kingdom. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) It's a one-two punch. There's so much fancy stuff now, too. You really do want to protect it. Yeah, and they have all of the official magic art, so you can go straight to their site and pick up some of the uh, art that you saw that year, or this year, excuse me. Uh... (laughs) <laughs> it's still this year. That's it's true. Where what the holidays have me all upside down. <laughs> Actually, I think the site's become pretty popular because some stuff has sold out really quickly. Um, like yeah, the Transformer stuff was not available, and so they, yeah, they have all of these secret layer drops now that they have exclusive rights to. They're going so fast. Yeah, there was a cat one on the Infinity for the Infinity set that I wanted so bad, and it was gone immediately. Ooh, well, so, if you can't find it there, you can also go to your LGS. Yeah, make sure you're keeping an eye on your LGS. LGS shelves and on ultrapro.com slash command to get the products that you need to protect your stuff. And the last way to support the show is directly at patreon.com slash command zone. We love our patrons. We have had people that have been patrons of ours for years now, and we know them on a name basis because we are all in a shared discord where Josh and I and Rachel, you've joined us recently, yeah. answer your questions, talk to you about magic cards, interactions, whatever you have that's on your mind, you can just ask us in the discord and Plus, there's a ton of other amazing people there. We love our community. So if you want to join that, all you have to do is go to patreon.com slash command zone and sign up there on a monthly basis. We do a lot of awesome stuff for our patrons. You'll see all the options there. And of course, we shout out one lucky patron every single week and uh, dedicate this episode to them. So it's kind of nice because this is the big one. This is the 2022 episode. So Does this person get the whole year dedicated to them? I guess so. Maybe that's a <laughs> new thing. 2022 brought to you by, by Tyler, Tyler Owens. Owens. Tyler, you rock. You, rock. you do rock, Tyler. <laughs> yeah, man, you really rock, Tyler. Jeez. Yeah, Tyler's been rocking for a year. <laughs> I feel like Tyler, the name like Tyler Owens can represent a big group of people too. It's a superhero name. It's two first yeah, names. It's got, yeah. it's got everything it needs. If right. your name is Tyler, Tyler or Owen, you rock. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, 20, get into well, it. let's get into our main topic. Uh, 2022 has been a crazy year for Magic. So much stuff happened. So many new products came out, and we're gonna go through a quick recap to uh, see if you remember. <laughs> all of the stuff it is that nice to list them all year. out yeah. yeah like everything that happened during the year because it is easy to forget these days yeah, there's absolutely. so much stuff that happens if you're yeah. seeing this on the screen too you'll see them all listed out and you'll understand the scope as well this is the timeline of 2022 <laughs> all right the very first set that came out this year, I don't know if you remember it, it's Innistrad Double Feature came out on January 28th. <laughs> I literally didn't think that was going to be the first thing. It oh, does yeah. count, though. Yeah. I uh, thought the next thing was the first. I did nope. actually forget about Double Feature. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, it did come out. That is the combined set of uh, Innistrad Midnight Hunt and Innistrad Crimson Vow. They mushed them together into one draftable set with some fancy printing. Hmm. They like blacked out the art on all of the cards 
Is and that what it was? It was supposed to be a draftable set? Yeah, yeah. yes. Does yeah. anybody know a single person that ever drafted it? No. Yeah, okay. no. Not a single. Uh, not I've a actually single never seen the cards in real life before. Yeah, I so. saw the digital image of the box. Yeah, That's yeah. it. To me, it was just a collective dream of ours that we had. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, yeah. I haven't seen anything in real life. The funniest <laughs> thing about it is we were so tired of drafting Midnight Hunt and right. Rinsen Vow, and they were like, like one more time. time. What if it was yeah. black and white? Yosh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the next set that came out that year was the first standard set of the year is Neon. Dynasty Kamigawa Neon Dynasty came out on February 18th nice. now this set was sweet this is very cool one of the best sets in a decade I would say almost they, one of the really one of the all timers and I think we're gonna go down as one of the great draft formats even oh, just yeah. a, a ton of so this was a home run on every level I think yeah absolutely and they released two commander decks with this set this was the vehicles uh, precon and the modified precon both yeah. super fun very powerful uh, cool commanders that I, I've been seeing a lot of at commander tables yep. I mean, that's Shorakai that's Chishiro that's yeah. Um, oh, yeah. A lot really, of cool stuff. Really cool stuff. In also, my favorite Game Nights episode, Posty was there. It was incredible. <laughs> the set looked sweet. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Out. that set was killer. All right, yeah. then we actually got a whole month off. Nothing happened in March. Crazy. Weird. Nice. What? My birthday happened in March, so that <laughs> was the release. Nothing happened in March. release, Secret <laughs> Lair, <laughs> Jimmy Wong. In deference yeah. to Jimmy Wong, <laughs> no just, product will be released yeah, in March. Especially not <laughs> in, in a moment of silence. March of the Machine. Actually, I March think March of the Machine comes out in April, actually, I think. Oh, so that's close. That's a miss. Should it come out in March? So close. Yeah. All right, that's 2023. We'll that's, stop now. That's how they decided yeah. to. <laughs> we'll, we'll write that down for next year's okay. Uh, <laughs> review. Okay. What was the third set of the year? Uh, this one was another standard set. It was Streets of New Capenna. Uh, came out on April 29th. It was a 20s uh, set with, with gangster themes and crime families. If you remember, that is the five crime fa- families that were associated Wait, with three quick, color pairings. Yeah, do you remember them? Can you remember the five families? Yeah, and probably their colors, if okay, you go. ask me. Oh, gosh, okay. I am asking you. <laughs> oh, all right. Cabaretti is yep. Naya, and yep. then you have uh, Maestros, which is Grixis. Yep. Yep. And then you've got, uh, let me think of the other names. <laughs> I know the two, names. Two, <laughs> two yeah, no, no, hold on. I definitely what got about them. the lawyer ones? Do you remember yeah. the lawyer ones? Yes, they are uh, white, blue, and green? Yeah. Are they banned? Yeah. Yeah, they're banned, and their name is uh, Ledger Keeper. Ledger Shredder. Ledger Shredder. <laughs> the, the brokers. brokers. The brokers. Yeah. That's right. You got yeah. two left. They're the worker ones. The worker ones. Oh, yeah. Riveteers, obviously. Riveteers. That's well done. Jund. Yeah. Uh, and then the last, last one, one was... What was the theme? Was it the demon one with Obnixilis? No. That, uh, no. that was the... It that was... was it, they were like in... Uh, like investigators? Right. Oh, Obscura. Yeah. Obscura. There you go. Demir. Yeah. Uh, no, Demir. Demir. Esper. 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 wizardy ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they also introduced a Gilded Foils, which was the, the shiny gold printing on some You know, of those them. were cool. They those were really cool. sweet. Yeah, I sort of forgot about them, but they, they held, were cool. They, 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 they really held a high cool. price, yeah. and they're also really popular commanders, especially the Obscura yeah. one, I think, is pretty strong. Yeah, I, I agree. I did know it. I just had to be prompted. Yeah. That's what it was. Just need a few clues. Yeah. There were Honestly, it was much easier from my seat than your seat. Yeah, yeah. true. I was like, whoa, no, I wasn't prepared. <laughs> there were five commander decks, of course, that came out uh, with this set. One oh, for gosh. each family. <laughs> I forgot all about that. Um, they weren't my favorite precons for the year, honestly. They were okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we may talk about this, but I don't think New New Capenna was my favorite set of the year. I like it. Yeah. It yeah. Just, it, I think it was a cool idea when you heard it, and then in practice, it just didn't. It was fine. It wasn't like horrible, but it just yeah. didn't strike me as particularly um, Started amazing. Started tri- like Neon Dynasty was like, well, this is sweet. My, yeah. my favorite thing about New Capenna was it had a sense of humor. Yeah, it was a funny set. It was a little like there were cheap. cards that there were cards that were like referential and broke the fourth wall a little bit, and uh, it, it 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 just goofed around a little bit more than a lot of Magic sets give them permission give themselves permission to do, which yeah. I really appreciated. I wish the draft format was better. Um, the, yeah, it, it was that it did was, hurt it. And the fact it, that, that it was really just like, was here's this three, these three color families, but what you should do is play two color aggro. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. It's like, don't mess around with three <laughs> colors. Uh, the fixing isn't quite there. Things I liked were the basic lands. They did a good job with that. And obviously, this is like the thing that they're always trying to do the best at. Every set, it's like, can we insert sweet basics? Then Wizards is going to do it, I think. Oh, that's one of my favorite trends that they've been doing. Um, yeah. The next set of the year was Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate, the longest set name ever. Maybe, <laughs> yeah, for sure. This one came out on June 10th. It was D&D themed based in the Baldur's Gate realm, uh, and it was a draftable commander set, so this one was for us. Um, it, was, it came out on June 10th, 
and was sort of immediately stepped on by a rush of products. And we'll talk about the next set soon. But there were four commander decks that came out with this one. There was the party deck. Mm-hmm. There was the uh, there was the blue. There was white black party. There was blue black horrors. Imagine trying to name these off. Red I, green, there's red no green way I would know dragons it. and yeah. uh, no red green cast from exile. And what was dragons? Red green cast from exile. Dragons yeah, it was like yeah, a weird was color. Blue, I think, was in the dragons one. Blue green. Blue red. Blue red. It was the goad one. Oh, right, uh, right, right, blue right. red dragons and goad. My my question is this: Commander Legends was a very special set the first time it came out. It also mm-hmm. did a lot of very broken things that were that are still impacting the format. This time it also got stepped on a bit by D and D because they sort of mashed that whole thing in there. But I actually thought it was a lot of fun to draft. I had a lot of fun yeah. playing it, and the cards from it were going to talk about a bunch of them today. Yeah, they kind of flew under the radar. Well, yeah, I, we should yeah. mention the backgrounds came out in Commander Legends, which I yeah. think is right. a particularly cool thing that happened. And the backgrounds have kind of slowly kept creeping up. Every time yep. you see one, you're like, that's a little better than I thought. Yeah. That's oh, wow. No, that's even better than I thought. Every I, time yeah. I see one, I think that. I think that's the trend for Commander for Baldur's Gate as a whole. Yeah. Is there's yeah. so many cards that are a little better than you imagined. And I think a lot of people didn't give it the time of day because there was so much going on in the set and because initiative was so difficult to wrap your head around for players at the beginning. So they just kind of skipped that text and then once you drafted it once you played it and you understood how powerful the mechanic was uh, i think it started to gain some popularity from there but yeah like jimmy said it was one of my favorite sets to draft of the year i think it in in retrospect it looks a lot better than it did back in june when it came out yep yeah because there was a lot of talk at the time about how the there wasn't very much value in the set and a lot of the stuff kind of languished on sell shelves and you can see the prices of like sealed product like dropping you could get it for very cheap for a while and i hope you pick some up because there's a lot of good stuff in there as it turns out but i think part of the reason that that all happened is like you intimated rachel is very hot on the heels i think literally before this set actually released we were already seeing previews for the next set which was a flashy set that caught your attention yep it was hard to ignore the spoilers coming for double masters 2022 uh which released on july 8th less than a month after Baldur's gate dropped so yeah when they released this product they were already being like yeah but look forward to this set you'll open uh uh the there was imperial seal and mana drain and like there was tons of stuff so it was just catching your eyes like wait before i even have my hands on Baldur's gate I'm already like drooling at the prospect of all the stuff I could open in right. Double Masters 2. It yep. was, you felt like you had to save your money for Double Masters, um, even though Baldur's Gate had just dropped. Yeah, it's a bit of conflicting stories for Commander. Is it about fun multiplayer with Baldur's Gate, or is it for really high power cards that happen in Double Masters? And I think that is always going to be sort of what is happening throughout the year. You'll see it. Mm-hmm. In, I remember almost for every set before the set was even out, you started to see glimpses of what's happening next a frustrating thing as well was Baldur- battle for Baldur's gate those packs did have a higher price tag than normal standard packs right. so it already did feel a little expensive and then double masters um jumped that with a very high price point yeah. um per pack and you i do get two rares and you get do two the double rares, thing yeah. but still the yeah. values there but you were like it was two sets less than a month apart with a higher price tag than we're used to seeing on commander on on magic sets and i think it sort of had people flustered yeah just a lot yeah. of pressure on your wallet yeah all all at once we got it we're going to talk a lot about double masters uh 2022 but the next set came out in september it was september 9th dominaria united we ah went yes back to dominaria we saw some familiar names we saw some redesign of old legends favorites and they tucked away some original legends cards in the collector boosters oh right they one. found all those boxes in a warehouse That's Wait, right. what? a tabernacle we forgot about Dun- those God, open. prof opened a tabernacle didn't he crazy crazy yes yeah. crazy. Yeah. absolutely have, have either of you Insane. opened a legends card in any of the no. no me neither no. Yeah. No, I didn't open very much. But. Yeah, I wasn't trying to go for one. <laughs> it would have been know. cool. Yeah, yeah. Del, for sure. Even if it was just a mo- mediocre one, I'd be like, wow, look at it. It's look. so, like, it's like a, an alien creature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the paper feels totally different. Yeah, exactly. It's crazy. Uh, this one had the stained glass treatment for all of the legendaries, and there were two commander decks that came out with Dominary United. This was the Five Color yep, Matters yep. deck, and then uh, Dihada, Legendary Tribal, my oh, gal. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Uh, notably, this was also the first time they tethered Jumpstart to a set. So it was it was Dominary United 
jumpstart. Which um, feels like that's the plan now moving forward. It does, yeah. Yeah. I, I like any time a set like this be- comes out because they'll have cards for Commander that don't need to affect the draft format and other things. Yeah, kind of cool. We didn't mention, but August, there was not a set release. We went from July to yep. Ooh, uh, another break. September, but it wasn't on purpose. There was supposed to be something that came oh, out that's in right. August. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, yeah. And instead, it was released on the same day as the next set. <laughs> this is the uh, first time, wait. Is the first time ever that <laughs> Booster Box, like... I guess it's not booster boxes for Warhammer, which right. we're going to talk about. But yeah. like two major products come out on the same day. I've like never seen it before. Same I didn't even date. realize it. Yep. I was just so... Anytime I saw a release date, my brain has just put it into like, it's just happening. Don't think about the actual date. <laughs> yep. I did not realize these came out the same day. So uh, the original set that was designed to come out on October 7th was Unfinity. This is a, the a new unset. We haven't seen one in a little while. Yeah. This time it wasn't silver bordered. Mm-mm. It was we'll talk about half that later. Yeah. silver bordered. It was acorns. Acorn. Yeah, it was acorns. Uh, yeah, so the acorn cards replaced the silver borders, uh, which was very confusing for a lot of players. It also introduced galaxy foils, which were pretty sweet. I don't yep. know if you've seen them in person, but they're gorgeous. Yeah, I think that, to me personally, just the idea of doing different types of foiling is much more appealing than mm-hmm. always changing what the card itself looks like. Sometimes sure. just having a cool-looking foil treatment over it works. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, the infamous stickers were born from Unfinity. <laughs> <laughs> you have a sticker deck. I do. I love it. I it's think it's so sweet. cool. I saw it in action. It didn't do anything. Yeah. And I was like, cool. Look at it go. Look at it. Look at it. Not do anything. <laughs> Someday. Well, I've uh, never seen someone put a sticker on their commander card before. And I was it's like, it's really fun. It's it novel. Feels, it feels like keyword abilities. Yeah. Yeah. To totally. me. Which, and anyway, I, I think it's really fun. And if you haven't looked into stickers and you're interested in a deck brewing challenge, I think they're really, I think they're really neat. Cool. Uh, so on the same day, though. Same day, October 7th. <laughs> This set was supposed to come out in August. It is Universes Beyond Warhammer 40K released five commander decks in two different versions. There was the just the regular one that any, uh, yeah. and then there was the collector edition commander decks that were all in surge and immediately foils. went up to like two hundred eighty dollars each. Or surge something. Yeah, they foil. released at like a hundred, a hundred and fifteen, hundred and twenty dollars, and then immediately on and yeah. eBay they were going for twice that, yeah, three I think times eight hundred. Last I saw for a full set, for a full set, a full yeah. Of them. Yeah, yeah, so about two about. But I'm calling it now. This set is going to be remembered as one of the greatest commander sets, or most impactful. Not greatest implies good, right? I think mm. there are a lot. It is a good set, but this will be one of the most impactful things I think ever to happen to commander. <laughs> Straight what, up, was Warhammer? Yeah, I think so. The decks and the the quality of cards. It's another set where you look at and you start looking at the cards. You're like, that's better than I thought. Mm-hmm. That's better than I thought, and it keeps going. I love these products. I mean, they're so fun right out of the box. They play really well against each other. And I think it was so fun seeing all four of them play against each other because it feels like you're in another world. Like it feels like a like an actual what universe on, is beyond on, yeah. is at its best exactly yeah, yeah they did I, new yeah. art for all of them even if it was a reprint card yeah. they, they did new everything. art but also we should say these decks had way more new cards than most commander precons yes. have mm-hmm. they had 40 or so each mm-hmm. so it made it feel like more like a totally new set than just a precon from a set like yeah yeah, yeah. it's a there premium a, board game experience that can you can then incorporate into your other board game that yeah. you've invested a lot of time and money Ugh. into and the decks were very powerful right out of the box yeah. really well designed yeah. uh, because there were so many new cards i think they were more able to sort of shape it mm-hmm. yeah so yeah the product, product is great it really surprised me too because i don't know anything about warhammer i don't care about warhammer but as like a world and yeah. a world building warhammer so good at that that it was it really drew me in i was surprised how much i liked these set these products yeah, we we've heard since from um, I believe the president or whatever of Hasbro that they're on their third reprinting. Oh, that's of, awesome of the of this the product. Yeah, yeah so we know it's been sense. very popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And All the right. Warhammer universe is just cool. The next one continued the robots trend. It took us to the Brothers War on <laughs> November eighteenth. So only one month after these two relays, really, really. Uh, release this i remember because it was like a month ago yeah <laughs> i remember yeah. that one yeah but you if, remember you look at this, if you look at this between september 9th and november 18th so about two months mm. four major things came out it was insane yeah. and we're not even done there's more major products that were released in yeah. the back half of the year uh but this was brothers war it was the last standard set of the year uh we went back to see urza and mishra battle of course we saw those two commander decks which are very powerful and very cool all in old border Yep. They also introduced uh, the Transformers cards, which yep. were very popular and are super sweet. Mm-hmm. And then serialized printings. Oh, right. With the artifacts. little number out of 500 and the cool foil frame. Yeah. They've hinted at this before. We saw this with the Viserys here. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. 
that was came out in 2021 but uh, a whole lot of them came out and they are pricey like even some of the less played ones are two hundred dollars a piece yeah what this does to the market though is that a market can only be overall right a certain amount of money so the more the, the special things that you have it actually pushes other things down so it does make the very normal versions of it which i think a lot of players prefer mm. much cheaper as a result and we'll talk a lot about uh, the actual reductions in prices later this episode yeah absolutely it's interesting though the effect it has you see it with like baseball cards pokemon cards they all have yeah. newer and yes. newer tiers they of didn't rarity. invent this a lot of other games yeah, and collectibles sure. are yeah. but what it does is it helps spread the market out i think to actually you can choose your entry point which is really important as a collector oh yeah i think it's i think it's great makes the game a lot more accessible and uh also rewards players who really want to invest in it yeah and that kid that opens one did you see the look on the kid's face when they open like a sweet card or something it's like i open that with you almost (laughs) it's such a cool it's okay all right right. moving (laughs) onwards moving onwards to uh uh, (laughs) the most controversial product that wizards has released you're not gonna see a look on a kid's face on this one no No. Uh, you see a kid with this taking the kid away out of their hands ask them how they got it and tell them not to do it (laughs) (laughs) uh it was the 30th anniversary edition that came out on november 28th this was a collection collector's edition set of beta basically beta reprints beta-ish? in modern changed phrase. in some ways there's yeah. a few cards yeah. taken out and then they doubled the the chance to get a dual land but yeah, yeah. it was yeah. four packs for a thousand dollars everybody knows what this and is and more soul rings too really yeah i think so they, they put, up the rarity wow. yeah, or, or I think lower they, they the rarity, the rarity and there's, you could find it in the uncommon slot yeah. interesting yeah it um we are gonna spend a lot of time don't worry talking about this product later um but you know it Received you hate it, it terribly <laughs> 30th anniversary for good edition. reason yeah literally one of the most controversial things that's happened in magic that i can remember you thought yeah. they couldn't top themselves in the magic world with controversy? No, it always happened I mean, somehow. Yeah. It was more than even when The Walking Dead first came out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. yeah. And that was, I thought, the most that controversial was big. thing. And in a long before time, that so, was like yeah. the tuck rule. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, we are going to get into it a little later in the episode, so stick with us. Uh, the next set that came out was December 2nd, just a couple of days later. It was Jumpstart 2022. Whoa. Uh, this was a standalone Jumpstart product, it wasn't attached to any sets. They released some uh pretty good reprints that are comparable to what they printed last year yeah um and we don't know what impacts those are going to have on prices obviously because it just came out well the anime waifu versions of all the cards are up there for good reason uh, for anyone that loves anime (laughs) so yeah absolutely uh and there's a number of brand new commanders in there as well which we came to expect from jumpstart last year Iko uktabi there's a little monkey i love him kibo i can't it's very exciting uh And they snuck one in before the end of the year. It's December 22nd. They're releasing the starter commander decks, which are five commander decks designed for new players. Accessible, um, not exactly designed around reprint value. They're just decks that you can play if you're new to the game of Magic. We should say there are entirely reprints, these starter commander decks. So there are no new cards that haven't existed before. Which is a a thing we haven't seen. Mm -hmm. They've always had pre-cons that have like at least three new cards that are, you know, only available for the first time in that pre-con. So this is an interesting way that they could possibly stick in some nice reprints for us. But you're right, mostly they're for new players, so I don't expect yeah. them to really do that. But I, like that being said, this is one of my favorite products of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we, as Commander players, have pushed the power level of... Uh, the precons that they're releasing to the point where they're inaccessible to <laughs> new magic players. Another tier had they to be made. They are too complicated uh, for a brand new magic player to pick up. Like, can you imagine playing the Mishra precon at, and if you're like right. new oh, to magic? Yeah. Well, it's interesting because a couple of years ago, the year of Commander happened, and one of the things they did that year was 2020 was they started releasing bunch of precons per set. Yeah, and th- originally those were supposed to be lower price points, mm-hmm. less new cards, more yeah. geared towards new players. And that slowly got pushed into the Urza and Mishra deck we have now, which are just like the two set commander precons that come out are just straight up commander precons and at a high complexity level mm-hmm. and kind of meant to sell to yeah. regular commander players. And what do you want to bet that these starter commander decks, these fully reprinted commander decks, if they continue within two or three years, they are high complexity, mm-hmm. higher reprint value, higher price point, because the community will always clamor for that to yeah. happen because new players aren't clamoring for anything because they don't exist yet. They're new right. players. You don't exactly. hear from them. Yeah. 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 I, I was very excited point. about 
those. So I'm looking, I hope those stay on shelves for a long time. Yeah, I think my takeaway, looking at it in the whole, before we start sort of talking about the set stuff a little bit more here, is that Magic is so big now. And we always mm-hmm. hear this online. Oh, there's 40 million plus players or whatever. But the thing is, the people online represent a tiny fraction of the actual player base. And this kind of proves it. Right, if they're releasing more and more universes being on Warhammer and people are buying it to the point of many reprints, mm-hmm. and they think the starter commander decks needs to exist, that's a whole group of players that hasn't had actually like magic to play. Yeah, they may know about, it, they may be interested in it. So I think one thing to think about is just like, yeah, there is a lot of product, but Magic is really becoming one of the most popular games in the world at this point, mm-hmm. and it may require this amount of release to sustain a player base that size. Yeah. And the fact that those two products are specifically designed to get new players and their commander products means that we are the gateway. To yeah, and Magic, they're continuing very to cool. Lord of the Rings. It's going to be another huge gateway yeah. next year. Um, so there were all of those products that we released include 12 products that came out roughly roughly one a month. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, in, there's some the stuff year. on here, though. Like, I don't know. Does the 30th anniversary edition deserve to be on this list it doesn't feel like it's the same as the other stuff yeah that's that's my question because i think we're used to product coming out in in sets you get a box and it's got mm-hmm. a name on it and it comes out and you treat it like a, a new set and yeah. it, it doesn't feel like these all of these can be called sets right the, so, the line got blurred even the starter commander yeah. decks are kind of like and eh, would i really yeah. count that as a set i don't know yeah or so, it used to just be sets that would go into standard too exactly <laughs> now we, and then they're like oh how about some modern masters and yeah. then that just went out of control. <laughs> so so that's the question is what is a set in 2022? You know what what is what makes a a set as we understand it for magic. Standard playable, I think. Is you think one, so? One of the criteria. Does Modern does, Horizons not count? You no, know, it does, but I'm saying it's if it is it instantly qualifies as oh, a okay. set. Okay. Right? Okay, sure. And I think anytime it's anything that's dr- trying to drive product into like modern or has a draftable environment. I think is considered a set to me. Or what about Warhammer Empire? 4K? Yeah, is they is, oh, okay. is or is Commander? <laughs> <laughs> okay, what about so the starter all Commander decks? They're all fully reprint. I don't consider that a set because they don't put the same amount. I think set also is determined by Wizards' uh, priorities on putting marketing and and content behind it. Hmm. I mean, it, the interesting thing about it is is like okay, draftable environment. I think is like was previously my expectation of a set. It's like right. they release a set of cards that are designed to be together. These are and play together. Um, and maybe that's it because that's what Warhammer 40k is basically is like we released these as a one art piece yeah like they are meant to be cohesive they are meant to match they are meant to be like on a similar plane in the same set yeah and it's <laughs> but the, in that mind that that would make the through 30th anniversary a, a, a piece right interesting but it's not like play it's not pl- eternal playable like they're not actually magic cards <laughs> maybe i mean there's a line to be blurred between pure collectors too because that's what 30th anniversary is supposed to be is like mm. for collectors only right obviously people saw it very differently mm. so i'm wondering if a set just means like you said there there is an element of, it's a whole thing but there needs to be a way to play it together that yeah. may be the core thing if you can't play it together then it's not really a set well here's a question yeah does it matter <laughs> like That's, it's just yeah. an arbitrary way to categorize them in right. some way and it's yep. kind of like I don't know that it matters that much I mean we we like to count them up so we can compare the amount of sets that, yeah. to last year and the previous year and again I don't know how much it matters to be able to do well, that but what if I ask you what is your least favorite set and most favorite set Cause of you the could, year yeah because yeah. we, we have this yeah. down and here like 30th anniversary t- can you count that set? as your least favorite set See, like, I don't, or I would you count say it like, as a set like, yeah. 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 yeah to me it's like closer to a secret layer or some other like ancillary product right. or like a spell spell or spell book or a you know whatever they used to release all these over the years a million different kinds yeah. of products and yeah there were these self like a uh, commander collection green oh or whatever. right yeah, i don't right, call yeah. that a set. yeah that's not a set yeah that's what 30th yeah. uh, anniversary edition feels, feels like, like yeah. i would put it in whatever bucket that goes in whatever that is yeah so yeah that's interesting collector but neon dynasty by the way yeah, <laughs> yeah. for sure just to answer the question yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very clearly without, yeah right without a doubt <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to say that. I mean, they're changing so much what they're giving us yeah. that it's it's hard to really get your head around like, yeah. all right, what magic product looks like anymore because it's they're doing different things, yeah. which is I don't, I, I think, I don't it's think exciting. it matters. The old categories yeah. don't matter. Like it's no. not that important. It's the word set plus a word before it. Traditional, yeah. draftable, playable, commander, commander set, and, draftable, yeah. set, collector, even set, collector you, set. Yeah. Well, I answered my favorite though. Yeah, I'm yeah, curious what your two oh. favorite sets of the year? Oh man, are were. 
I I think I have to I think I have to defend the home team here. It got so much hate throughout the year, but I was really happy with Commander Legends Baldur's Gate. I thought the draft format was a triumph. I drafted at every moment that I possibly nice. could. Um, the decks are really they really improved on the draft format from the original Commander Legends, which I thought was fairly miserable to actually play. Fun to draft and fun to open, but I I didn't think they had quite captured. I, I mean, I liked. Yeah. Original Commander Legends, I wouldn't define as miserable, but I definitely think but the it had problems. Like three yeah, hours. Yeah, that was long. the problem was they hadn't figured out like, hey, these decks have to be able to win, so they you need to, to stick in threats. some high end stuff, and they did yeah. that a lot better with Commander Legends. Ball's and I think sure. the initiative went a long way to do that. Can I ask you yeah. when you say that um, it got a lot of hate? What do you mean by that? Do you remember what people were saying about it? That I I think a lot of people looked at it and were like, oh, I'll skip that and I'll go to Double Masters. And it didn't, mm. it does, they're like, it doesn't have the power. It doesn't have the relevance. I it see. doesn't have, um, yeah. like, it's a misunderstanding of commander players. People were like, poo pooed this product as, as just like not good enough. Yeah. And I but disagree. The D&D part of it seemed to hurt it as well. I agree. I, I think they didn't yeah, serve it particularly point. well. Um, but I, as like a set of cards to play, it's, it's absolutely my favorite set. Um, yeah, every chance I got to play it, I, I highly enjoyed it as well. Maybe it's just a matter of, you know, how the community decides to receive things and what they're prioritizing. Because I think yeah. for a long time, high flashy reprints are always going to take, it's almost like clickbait. It's like, we're look gonna, at this card yeah. that's so much cheaper now. Or we're going to talk about accessible. it in a little bit, though. It did have value in it. Yeah, for it sure. It just didn't hold the value. Yeah, yeah but it's like I, your I, outside perception of it has sort yeah. of changed. Some that. of it's got to be the way they frame it, though, and the way they sell I it. Think, and I think yeah. it was hurt by, like, Double Master stepping on its heels. Like, yeah. imagine yeah, there's a... For sure. An additional month where it gets to Ugh, sort of breathe on yeah. its own. Maybe maybe the perception of it's different. And I think, yeah, the D&D aspect yeah. to me hurt it because yeah. commander players aren't necessarily D&D players. And when you put a D&D tag on it, you're saying this is for a very specific yeah. audience. And I'm if I'm not that audience, but I do like commander, it feels like, mm. Do I need to, yeah, am I as interested as before? Yeah. Maybe not. Yeah. It's, it, I feel think tac- it felt the, tacked onto it too. I think yeah. the worst thing about Baldur's Gate is the packaging. The packaging and the marketing and the way that they sold it and the way that they like dressed it up. And I think that is a shame, and uh, and it's it's interesting because the gameplay itself because the game gameplay and the itself, cards yeah, yeah. are great. Yeah. You can tell they put a lot of love, I think, into the design and, yeah. and the environment, so which is always important. It's 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 in a way both my favorite and least favorite set of the year because <laughs> I think it was Bi- Wizards' greatest triumph and also their big greatest failure in card design this year. Yeah, also Jimmy, how about you? Your, my favorite set by far. I've been thinking about this whole time. Yeah. Has to be Innistrad double feature. <laughs> <laughs> I already that, forgot again yeah, that it existed. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So how can that not be your favorite? It was so good. You were like, you know what? I want to remember it again for the first time. And that is what double feature is. It's oh, the double God. part of it. Uh, it's got to be Neon Dynasty, though. It was just too good. Yeah. Too good. Neon Dynasty was sweet. That draft environment was so sweet. was so sweet. sweet. I loved even... You wa- do everything. I would yeah. watch people. I would just sit yeah. and go on Twitch and watch other people yep. draft it because I was like, what are you doing? Oh, yeah. that's so cool. You can do that, too? Yeah. I gotta go try that, yeah. Exactly. All right. Um, what's oh, yeah, our next the, category here? Tw- by tw- the numbers. <laughs> Yeah, I wanted to, let's actually get into what these products like mean and look like compared to the years past. Yeah. Um, so we had, if we're going to define it traditionally by set, we had eight like more traditional sets. So that excludes Double Feature, Warhammer 40k, yep. the Starter Decks, and the 30th Edition okay. uh, stuff. So it, there was about right. Eight is about right. So 2021 had seven sets and 2020 had eight. So that Maybe is... that's the core baseline of what Magic used to be before exactly. this last, right, the last five years. I mean, like it used years. to be five, maybe even less, but yeah, yeah. of but the new paradigm, I right. say we're right. like on par, right? Right. The I think we have maybe reached a plateau, but they are giving a lot more air to other like auxiliary products. Mm-hmm. Right. So it feels like there's so much more products, but I think... Like, if we're talking in terms of a traditional set, it is about what we've come to expect. Okay. Uh, it feel, I think it just feels like more products because there's so many commander stuff. There's so many stuff, much stuff for us specifically. Right. Oh, this is exciting. So yeah. what Rachel has done here is created uh, sort of like what happened in 2020, what happened in 2021, and then it's blacked out what has happened mm-hmm. in 2022. And we're going to go through a list of these here to see just how good Josh and I are predicting <laughs> slash Trying reading the through the Sharpie. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I'll so, be doing uh, that soon when we cut to a full screen graphic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's play this little game. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So there was a number of uh, precons. There's a number of precons released every year. In okay. 2020, there was nine. In 2021, there was 15. Oh Whoa. How many precons do you think they released in 2022? Pre, these are pre-constructed commander decks. 
more than 20. I could count real quick, but I guess I I was going to say, yeah, don't. Do that. Oh, that's right. You could count. Yeah. If yeah. you do the math real sneaky like, you could figure it out. I have, I'm going to say a flat 20. You're going to say 20? Yeah, that makes about sense. Yeah, it's probably a little over 22. Yeah, very close. 24 pre-cons oh, no! came out in 2022. Wow, more Two a month uh, of pre-cons came out this year, uh, which is a lot considering, uh, you know, Warhammer 40K released five and then the five oh, starter course. decks are okay. another five. That's 10 in yeah. the last it's two months in or the whatever, last three months. months. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, and I would say that like, when we look at the number of sets and say, you know, there was eight in 2020, seven in 2021, eight this year, it feels about the same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the one of the big difference about sort of modern product release is that there are at least two pre-cons with every set now. Sometimes there are four and five. Yeah. Whereas if you go right. back to 2019, there what? was only four or five commander yep. decks that came out per year. That's it. And mm-hmm. like all these sets would drop like Eldrain and there's no commander decks with it. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah but we are still uh, on an exponential growth in terms of the number of, of pre-cons that they are releasing a year, which is kind of fun. Okay. Honestly, this next one uh, it must mean that the player yeah, base is big enough for it. Other, the, otherwise, it'll slow down. Yeah. The next one is the number of new commanders that came out. So okay. in 2020, in 2020, there were 192 new commanders released. Okay. In 2021, there were 193. Very similar. Yeah. What do you? How many commanders do you think came out in 2022? Okay. Well, you that's gotta, considering there's 24 new precons. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I know have, a little bit about this because there's some chatter. Well, I don't want to ruin you, Jimmy. Okay. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was just yeah. gonna say Warhammer also ups it even more because each of those yeah. precons had like three or four legendary creatures yeah. in there. How many, how many do you oh, think? Oh, how many do you think? I'm just gonna put it at uh, 230. Mm-hmm. So I remember, and I'm cheating a little because we did a tweet at some point, Ash, oh, Ashland right. had put together, and the question she had posed was, are there going to be more new commanders than days in the year? Because yes. we were on about track where oh, it was going to be no. close. I'm so off then. So it's definitely above yeah. 300. Holy and the, the real question is, did we get above 365 or not? I'm going to say we did. I'm going to say 367 or so. Okay, there were 383 <laughs> new commanders in 2022. 383. Um, Name them all for $1,000. Yeah, yeah. Ready, go. <laughs> we'll give you the 30th anniversary okay. product it's if you name them all. Badira Jagira, <laughs> Falira, Chishira, 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 Chishino. Wow. 380. Yes, 83. Oh, my God. Lord, and way over one per way day. Way over one per day. And Wait, I got a YouTube channel idea for somebody out there. You yeah. can have this one for free. You just, every day, <laughs> every day, you a do new, yeah. a 10 to 15 minute video yeah. about one of Not the even that. Just do a YouTube shorts only. There It'll you go. Yeah. YouTube yeah. shorts only. Two and then minutes. Instantly take that to TikTok. Do yeah. the exact same thing. That's That one's free. Go ahead. Start every video. We don't have with, time to do it ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> Can you I mean, believe it? There's been more commanders released per day this year. Here's the day 367 or whatever. Yep. There's no day 367, by the way. You can't <laughs> have that on one It's on double leap year. <laughs> the thing that surprised me the most is it is just shy of twice the number of That's commanders That's nuts. Yeah, because I was thinking 192, 193, and yeah. then... 380 plus? 383. Oh my gosh. Uh, It's an unbelievable number. Next year, 2,000. Yeah. It shows you where the focus is for sure. Oh yeah, for sure, yeah. So this is is interesting and it it will uh, expand this conversation. So what, how many, so the number of new cards that came out this year. Okay. uh, In 2020, there was 1,219. Okay. In 2021, there was 1,823. Oh. So they added 600 new cards. Ruh-roh. In 2022, how many new cards do you think they released this year? Okay. So well, these are not reprints. I can see the two. So it starts yep. with two. I'm just going to say 2,500. Nice and safe in the middle. Mm-hmm. If it's 3,000, I won't be disappointed. If yeah. it's less, I won't be disappointed either. You, 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 I'm not believing you. I like you. the disappointment, which implies yeah. that you're rooting for certain outcomes. Yeah, yeah. This yeah, is yeah, just yeah. what happens. You're Jimmy. deeply like, invested, I, you know, in these statistics. I was so under on the number of it's new. It's already commanders. happened. I'm having an existential crisis. Okay, you said 2,500. Yeah, I'll take the under. I'm going to say 24 or 23. Ah. So there was only 2,120 oh. new cards this year. I, I guess oh, way that, less than I thought. So that's only that's only like 300 more than last year. And most of them are probably still from Warhammer. And most of them are legendary creatures. And but that's the interest. <laughs> that's the interesting thing is we have almost twice the number of new legendaries, but only like three hundred new cards. No, oh, that's interesting. Okay. So uh, the I, jump between twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one would have made me think. 
yeah, yeah like, like hi yeah, yeah to, to fit all the legendaries yeah but i guess it's not. i mean between the warhammer precons and dominaria and oh, then right. Baldur's gate that's going to be a lot mm. of legends so i think those three products are definitely carrying the brunt of those legends yeah and their ratio of legendary creatures that are new versus not in the 99 mm-hmm. in cards the 99, that are new yeah. is going to be exactly skewed towards the legendary creatures interesting so yeah. Uh, but I wanted to talk about it because there's new cards that came. Uh, I, I want to talk about the new cards that are commanders this year because oh, I, of be- the total percentage of, of the percentage. Okay, yeah, great. Because well, if I, that is if a, I that really is an interesting math, adjust. Yeah, you yeah. Can, you do the math real quick. Uh, it's like twenty percent. So yeah, it feels like so in in 2020, fifteen point eight percent of new cards that were released were rule legends. So. Six, a high amount, 16%. actually. Uh, it is worth noting that 2020 is when Commander Legends came out. Right. And there were like 70 plus new yeah. Legends. Yeah. There was yeah. a ton of new Legends so that came that out So that all by itself changed the ratio. Right. So 15.8% in 2020. In 2021, 10.6% of new cards were Legends. Wow. That's so very yeah. low. Okay. Um, so and this is like 19.7% or something. Yeah. So we have o- like cool. almost twice the number of Legends. And She's covering it I'm covering it. I got you, <laughs> cheaters. Checking my well, paper. No, I know there's 380 uh, yeah, whatever, three, yeah. and then divided by t- 2,000, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. So, it's yeah. I think it's like 18%. Yeah, uh, it is one fifth almost wow, okay. of new cards but that released were legends. 15% in 2020, so that's 16%. 16% then, is, is yeah, only 2% difference. It's pretty difference. close percentage-wise, yeah. Percentage yeah. yeah. So okay. so it isn't, it isn't scaling in an exponential, like, scary no. way in this way. It isn't quite as extreme as, as it looks on paper. Okay. There are a ton of new legends coming out. You did mark that 2022 was, 2020 was higher because of Commander Legends. Yes. Same goes for this year. And so. had a Commander Legends set yeah. as well. So anytime so. you see the Lord of the Rings is probably going to skew it next year as well. Any kind sure. of draftable Commander set has to be chalked full yeah. of Legends. Oh, yeah. you have to have uh, because you have to have Legends. Who's yeah. probably going to do the same thing. Yeah. So yeah. I think that expectation on obviously changes things but we're still sort of on track for where we were we're just you know a, a thousand more new cards than 2020 right yeah and i would say 2020 was the year of commander so mm-hmm. it introduced sort of a, a paradigm shift and I, I bet if we took 20 16 17 and 18 uh, they'd be way lower and the, compared them to this they're going to be a lot lower because i think yeah. what probably happened is sort of like a slow thing they just jumped up to here and now we're here now yeah i i would expect yeah. that between like uh, roughly 15% of new cards are going to be legends. Just like from now on. Yeah, I mean, man, that's a that's, lot of that's a lot of lore. It's a huge amount of new characters. Yeah, it's it can't huge... just be like guy on the street anymore. No, this no. guy's a name. Although a story. I would absolutely build like Jeff, guy on the street. <laughs> Carl one man on a one one. That's it. <laughs> he's white. Yeah. 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 Or he's he's g- green for the vanilla creature. <laughs> he's nothing nah. else. He's just straight up. Jeff on the street. <laughs> two two. Two two's big, man. It means he could kill a bear. I mean, no, Jeff I think he's a out. one one. Jeff, yeah. Jeff, Jeff's he's on the street ripped. working out. Working. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. say what he's doing on the street. He's working out. Yeah. yeah. He, but on every plane, Jeff shows up and he's always working out on the street. All right. So this is a huge amount of new commanders. That's like two, another yeah. 200 yeah, new commanders came out. It, four 400 almost came out this year. What do you guys think about that? Do do having like this many new legends, is that good and helpful for deck builders? Or is that just like, do we get into a, a decision paralysis moment where it's like, there's 400 new commanders. I don't know looking, them all. Yeah. It's kind of like looking at infinity at the same time sometimes. Because yeah. really what they are, if you think about it, you can only green, black, and all these color combinations mm-hmm. have a zone of game design attached to them. Mm-hmm. And five color obviously is the most open of all of them. But at the same time, it also limits what you can do design wise. With so many commanders, you start looking at them and your brain kind of mushes them into like just about elves, just about this, just about whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh, the best rat tribal deck commander just came out or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I think just because there are a bunch of iterations, it does allow for more player choice. I don't think it's actually giving me paralysis. If anything, I would say like it's just filling in more holes and gaps in the room that haven't been filled in yet is it good if all the holes get filled up i'm not sure sure i mean that's the thing is there in on one hand it's amazing to be like oh they they finally made a shrines commander this year and people really were really loved playing shrines are really exciting excited about that um so it's nice to see these holes get filled in i do not like 
when they make these five color tribal commanders that are like, okay, well, this is the shrines commander forever. Right. The like Goshintai, they're never going to print a better shrines commander than Goshintai, right? Gavin's somewhere going challenge accepted. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. I guess that, I guess never say never, and that's but the yeah. Thing. I get it's, what you're saying. It's, it's, so it's, it's like we're, so we're done. We fixed the shrines hole, and now it like I'd rather. I think people are really upset about like nine nine fingers keen. I don't know because it was a three color gates commander, mm-hmm. right? And I actually loved that she was in three colors because now there's room for like different gates commanders. Right now next year they can do a different three color. There's a Naya commander gates and, commander, yeah. and it, it allows so you get to make choices. Yeah, and I. I love that. I love that there's choices and that there's you you can be like, you know what? I don't like doing a g- generic lands deck. I want to do Hazizan, which is more right. desert focused. Like that's that's very cool. More specialization basically. Legendary creatures because this is just the theme of I think our entire generation. It's like we like looking at heroes and playing mm-hmm. heroes and champs in all our video games. As long as it allows, I think, for people to figure out what they want and it makes them the happiest playing it, then it's a good thing. Yeah. So I think we are still there's still a lot of room in the magic box, which is kind of crazy, just how much design space there still is. Yeah. Uh, and now that we're going into more universes, there's going to be even more <laughs> design space to play with. So I don't think this is going to slow down anytime soon either. As a player, I kind of like it too. I will say that, that there's this many new legends because it's not commander of the old days where you're playing against like between at like 16 different commanders all the <laughs> right, time right. you know where it's like all right we got Atraxa, we got mildrotha we got right like uh nay not Nayith, the the mayel oh my yeah, like yeah, just yeah, yeah. <laughs> like there was a whole era of a commander where it was Carador, like, i saw yeah some yeah like Carador yeah. and marin it was Nekusar. just like everybody yeah, had yeah. the same decks everybody was always playing the same decks and now you can see a new commander deck every single time you walk into your game store, which is pretty exciting. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's like pluses and minuses because mm-hmm. uh, the customizability of the format is like one of the great things about it and the mm-hmm. fact that like you could express your personality and your play style. Mm-hmm. And that would be my counter to the, the Goshintai Shrines thing is like mm-hmm. we see that tons of people will play the suboptimal version of, you know, yeah, whatever of you know whatever the best rats one is. Well, whatever the second best rats one is, somebody some people are going to do that and those are the people that want to feel like they don't, dress the same as everybody else or the same thing at the restaurants or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So they they have that option. So I think that part of it is good. I think, you know, to acknowledge and and I think it's a a good point that people are a little bit frustrated with the the gameplay side of the, the coin, which is the complexity level gets really, really high when I don't know I'm not able to hold in my head what all the cards do or most of them do. And mm. that's what is happening when there's so many legends. Yeah. Yeah. And so it, the game just is kind of less fun when I'm in mode. And I find myself in this mode a lot these days of like, what is I just going trust on? You. I'm, I'm just trusting you. Yeah. yeah. I'm Whatever just trusting you're what you're doing because I can't hold in my head what everybody's commanders do and how they mm. interact with every, everything because it was a lot easier when there was 20 yeah. to 25. Yeah. I could, I could keep in my head what, Everything those twenty to twenty five or whatever would do, and how they interact and stuff. Yeah. You know, new ones. There's just no way to keep that in my head anymore. Mm-hmm. So there's just a lot more of like lean back. Hey, I'm I'm taking your word for whatever's happening over there. You know your deck. I don't, and there's no way I'm going to learn it. And it doesn't matter if I learn it because I'm never going to see it again. So yeah, yeah. Just tell me if I would live or die or what happens. Yeah, yeah. or if and I need to just, respond to a trigger. Or yeah, something, right? and that yeah. that is kind of a negative. I think so. Yeah. You, you got a little give and take there. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the game's complexity is always going to be at the core of how people enjoy it. Some people like to enjoy a very simple game, and as a result, more cards ends up creating an intense experience. Believe it or not, we are not out of products for the year. Uh, <laughs> what? Of course not. Uh, because the Secret Lair. Right. Uh, secret Lair. Uh, continued right. this year. In addition to all the other products that we have mentioned, there were also a ton of Secret Lair drops uh, with a lot of different crossovers. Most of them were reprints, but they did release eight new Street Fighter Commander cards that were mm. unique to that uh, that secret lair. They also did uh, crossovers with Post Malone and Transformers and War even Hammer. Fortnite. <laughs> and Fortnite. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Warhammer. And um, there were a ton. There were a ton of secret lairs. So I've got one more quiz yeah, for I was going to say, guys. I don't know how many, though, one because more it's blacked quiz. out. Yeah. <laughs> nice, uh, nice, so nice. the number of secret lairs by year. In 2020, there was 26 secret lairs. In 2021, there were 46 oh, secret boy. lairs. How many secret lairs came out in 2022? I'm going to say 72. Oh, I, I was like going to go num- high. I like that number. It's a nice sounding <laughs> number. I thought I wasn't going to go to 70s. I was going to say 67. All right. You guys are on either side of it. It was 70 new secret layers. Wow. Exactly 70? Wow, 70. Nice. Holy cow. New secret layers that came out in 2022. Um, huge amount of new cards. Most of them reprints. More than one per week. Yeah. More than, more more than, than one, one per week. Yeah. Like a lot more. Uh, yeah. You know, almost. Yeah. One and a one half and a per third? week. Yeah. Um, 
a ton of new uh, new cards came out in Secret Lairs, uh, and that's just part of the cycle now. Uh, yep. The nice thing about Secret Lairs is it feels like, as a collector, you can be like, you know what? I don't care for any of these. I'm going to skip this month. Yeah, I'm very happy that I was like, Mystic Remora, finally, a, oh. both a version I like and one I can get. Yeah. yeah, so I think there were a lot of wins in Secret Lair. Maybe it comes as a result of selling so many. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's tough. They got a hit eventually. <laughs> if you look at, yeah, right. If you, if look you throw at first, 70 darts. <laughs> exactly, because if you look at the first year, like Kaleidoscope Killer is the one that we previewed on the mm. channel. I was like, this is sweet. If everything is like this, it's going to be amazing. And obviously, Secret Lair, the more they release, it can't all maintain that same level of like, I need and want this mm -hmm. so yeah. we're just sort of seeing that same thing they're throwing a whole bunch of darts and if you want to get hit by one you can put your hand up and slap it to that order <laughs> button <laughs> you can catch the dart with your open hand with your open hand <laughs> yeah <laughs> they uh, also continued the trend of releasing secret layers in formats that aren't necessarily just six cards in a box like yep, they right. did the heads and tails commander deck last year <laughs> they were <laughs> sent out this year they, arrived they, this year. Year. they, they did arrive wow. uh, or they're still arriving I think uh, to be I don't know yeah. anything about collation but I can imagine putting a deck together is insane <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this year they all released all these different foils and stuff. Oh my goodness! It was they just have like it was 10, a real people disaster. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. sorting With by clubs, sorceries. Yeah. Hopefully, those people are getting paid minimum wage in the hair. You know, like yeah, you know, yeah, being yeah. Treated yeah. Well, no, Everything in that. That's not how they're doing it. The machine's doing it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't worry, it's okay. But we have they want to volunteer. Know, Maybe I'll do yeah. a couple decks. What's the rate? Is it good? Jimmy comes in his hands are just bleeding. What happened? But look, they gave me a free one. All right. <laughs> they, this year they released the 30th anniversary countdown kit. This thing was sweet. Did either I, of you get it? I got it and oh, I you love it you and it's it? amazing. Uh, yes. I got one. Yeah. Yes. Um, you so both got one? Some people got like their orders doubled by accident and stuff. This was a controversy because, by the way, do not confuse this with the 30th anniversary beta no. thing. We this will is talk like the about advent that calendar later. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like an advent this, calendar. Open a booster pack per day in December. Yeah, there was 30 cards for the 30th anniversary and they were all like super fancy prints of it and then and you got to open it and either you got a foil or you didn't but you all you were guaranteed the 30 cards in the in the printing for this however ordering process for this as i buy a lot of secret layers was a disaster oh my god uh, it just ended up being one because everyone knew that there was a mox opal in there mm -hmm. everyone knew the card quality and they they a bunch of them hadn't revealed yet so it's like what else if these are the first three we see they flooded the website. The, the 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 buying bot just basically wrecked itself, and as a result, only certain people really were able to buy a lot. And, and some, some people, people bought a lot. Ended up with like four copies accidentally because yeah. they're like it never really loaded. I think the site I have a allows friend you that to, ended up with four. Wow, the site I believe allows you to buy thirty of each secret layer product. So some people I mean, even this, that product. Yeah, I think so because I think for retailers and stuff, or for like people that just want to sell them at a, I don't know, hmm. something else, they, they do allow that, especially for the regular ones. Mm. But I believe I mean, that this option one was, was different available. than past products because most secret layers are produced to order. Print yes. order. But yeah. because Print this order. one had to arrive on a specific time, right? Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't make sense if you're going to supposed to open, you know, one every day leading up to the holidays, you have to have them in people's hands by yeah. December 1st for that to really work out. So that requires them to pre-print a, print a certain amount. Yeah. And so that's, I think, where the problem comes in here. Because otherwise, yeah. you just take all the orders, say, how many are there? There's this and many. Make okay, them. make that many. And then, you know, sometimes you get in the problem where you're sending it out a and year later. And that's what they want to do as a company. Yeah. yeah. But the, the, yeah. So it's almost like they needed to take the orders for next year now. And yes. then they could make... You know, however the many we sell, year, then yeah. everybody yeah. could get it. But because they were in that situation, you Even know, I, I get it is what I'm saying. Yeah, it was it was a really tough product to get right. But I, I want to talk about how they could maybe have improved it, like uh, to make that experience a little bit better and more celebratory for fans, because it felt like a dog fight in there. Oh, it to, absolutely like, get, was. And I mean, it was me and my boyfriend on the computer being like, did you get through? No. Did you get through? No. no. It felt and like the war the spark. Um, what was that thing with the planeswalkers? Yes. Oh, yeah. Where yeah, everybody Mythic just ended Edition. up with the, uh, yeah. I still have two uh, uh, yeah, of, uh, yeah, uncut, sheets, uncut yeah. sheets, which were the, you know, we're sorry. Yeah. You know. I, I wonder if they had been like, okay, we've got like 2,000 that are printed. And if you, if you get in the first 2,000, you you'll have it. it by the holidays right. and we'll print the rest to order. I think if that had solved uh, that is the solve I believe that makes the most sense because so many people just opened them like as soon as they showed up just opened all the packs and were like they could even have raffled it like you know yeah. for all the orders we're right. gonna randomly choose yeah. the 2,000 people that get it and yeah. then everybody else you, you will get it it just might be February yeah right. were you naughty or nice this year yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's it Santa decides if you Marketing get a product genius right yeah. there Santa <laughs> everyone's <laughs> like Wizards of the Coast said I was naughty this year <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna file a lawsuit <laughs> 
the idea of a wizard being like, you've been naughty. You've been naughty, been naughty. yeah. <laughs> By Santa, the new legendary creature. You play stasis. I, uh, I remember a long time ago, and this could be my brain melting, but I remember they said that secret layers would never be limited. I remember very, very early on, there was some communication that said that, and there have been many limited things for secret layers since. Mm-hmm. So this to me is like, Maybe there's a balance where you can't reprint Mox Opal unless it's a limited release. What if that is something that has to be decided? Maybe. I mean, and- but you can because what they do is they set it at a price point that is what Mox Opal is worth, mm. and so it doesn't actually change the price in the secondary market. And that's what we saw with like Bitter Blossom and other things right. in the past. Yeah, where like you don't. And I think secret layers are great. Don't get me wrong, because you know exactly what you're getting. You know exactly what you're paying. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. definitely it's like not like a loot box. Yeah, yeah. which is what booster packs are. <laughs> yeah. And there's yeah. problematic things with booster packs in that regard. Um, but I think that you know they usually price it so that it sort of prohibits the prices getting out of whack with what the secondary market is. Right. right. I yeah, it's it's tough to consider secret layers at reprints. They don't really yeah. affect the secondary market prices. They they don't a lot of them don't even enter like the card bloodstream. A lot of like they stay sealed or they don't get sold. Um, so they they can obviously those prices rise of the secret layer printings. Um, they don't really have any large effect on yeah. the regular ones. Um, I That's not to, our job here, by the way, at the command zone. We don't really like to talk about finances because we don't. We, we don't like, really we're like, know. We're like armchair. Well, we talk about we've got we talk some. about reprint value and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yes. I'm not like here's where the market's going. Yeah, I'm definitely yeah. not like <laughs> hey, you should buy this thing. It's probably going to go up. We don't know. We're yeah, bad at that. I am not Jim Cramer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I want to talk about one more thing with Secret Lairs this year because for the first time they released uh, the skins of the Stranger Things cards. Uh, that's right. Uh, this, they they called them <laughs> they called them universe within cards uh, this year. So they took the uh, secret layer that was Stranger Things that came out in 2021 and they reskinned them, reflavored them to be magic. Like they were all Innistrad characters. They were Innistrad characters. Yeah. Well, and they released them in, Shat- New Capenna. New Capenna in the Capenna New Capenna set, Capenna set, boosters. set boosters. Yeah, I remember yeah. I played two of them on the uh, Game yep. Nights episode for New Capenna. Mm-hmm. And it almost makes them into more like the Godzilla uh, yes. stuff from Akoria yeah. than you know, which what is- people thought they were, which I think is Great, because if you like the card design, and I think that's most of the problem people had with like Walking mm-hmm. Dead and maybe Warhammer and things like that, which is mechanically unique cards that only exist in this world. And if you don't like the aesthetic of that other world and you right. want to stay in the high fantasy world of magic, well, yeah. if they're going to do this, yeah. kind of alleviates that pressure and says like, you will have the option then to play these cards, but with a skin that keeps you in the high fantasy world that you like. Mm-hmm. I they, remember that being yeah. the same line that people that was like agreed upon with Godzilla. I was like, this is why it's okay. Yeah. So they yeah. did this, but it took them a while. Yeah, I, I think they got there and they they really answered the concerns of the community. I wish they'd get there on the Walking Dead one. I am still stuck playing yeah. Rick in my uh, Winona deck. deck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's really good. <laughs> it's, you just can't. It, you just got to play it. And his He's, name Rick's, is Rick. Rick's it's so just good. Rick on the street. It's Rick on the street <laughs> working out. We uh, already had the card. Yeah. I And I think it, it I answers like a lot of the <laughs> concerns about prices where right. people were like, if, yeah, a, yeah, if yeah. a commander becomes too popular and the price spikes and it's just impossible to get your hands on, now there's a lot more in the Yeah. Where's in your the, pressure release the, valve? And now exactly. they have it. Right, right. They so have it'll remain to be seen if they do they do that with Transformers. Do they do that with the, some of the Warhammer stuff? They did that. They The new ones just came out for Street Fighter. Um, the reskins on the Street Fighter cards. Oh, okay. We're so Universes today. Beyond mm-hmm. are being put into it, the Magic Universes World. Universes Within. Within, sorry. Right, right, right. But you'll see the price of the uh, mechanically, once mechanically unique cards from Stranger Things and the Secret Lairs and as well as their named comparisons. Mm-hmm. And the prices are actually drastically different because there's collectability, I think, to the Secret yeah. Lairs still. And that holds the value much higher. So it's also a much more affordable way to play the cards and it's Absolutely. already within the world. So that's a good, definitely I mean, just, all ups here. There has to be more copies of the new Capenna versions just For out sure. in circulation. Because so many yeah. set boosters the sec- were released. Yeah, the yeah. secret yeah. layers were sold And out. if like if you're playing the deck to play a, st- a secret uh, Stranger Things deck, then you need the Stranger Things right. one. But if you're playing yeah. it for mecha- mechanical reasons, then you can just get, you know, we're Nog, Riders Champion. Uh, my favorite thing about these reskins, though, were they were like, they were friends forever still. Yeah. yeah. So they were like, here's a random mage and a random guy and a cop and they're friends <laughs> forever for no reason. Yeah. I want this book. 
<laughs> yeah. I want There's the book a reason. They just haven't come up with it yet. So much more. God, I want to know. Cecily Wernock, Zavina. Yeah, oh, how I did know. they become friends? How were exactly? they friends? Not only that. They went to high school. Awesome. Yeah, they went to high school. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. And then an interdimensional <laughs> threat. Yeah. The threat book is, high school. is thin. Yeah, the book's yeah, not yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like babysitters. And spell. then they all went to the upside down. It's yeah. perfect. <laughs> um, I just want to know how Otham, Sigardian, Outcast became friends forever with all of them. Or maybe it's just like exactly. him after the friendship. Well, none of the rest of them are Sigardian. So mm. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. He's now you know what? It's, from Sigardia. Maybe it's like a sister to the traveling pants situation, and they all live in like slightly different areas, <laughs> but they're bonded together by one magical. Yeah. And they're like, hat did you remember Innistrad? The it's double a sister of the traveling hat. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. People love hats. So they're like, Innistrad, yeah. yeah. Did you guys remember double feature? And I was like, no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely not. They're the, they are the seven players who remember <laughs> double, double feature. feature. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we talked about a lot of products. A lot of stuff has come out. Uh, uh, so we have to answer the question that we have been asking for years, and that is, is there too much product? Yeah. I mean, definitely. For my it's brain It's just to keep so much more than it used to be. It is mm. just like Yeah, insane. we haven't had time to increase our appetite. <laughs> it, I mean, just for almost 400 new legendary creatures. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot. We've been saying it for years now, and the, I mean, the and answer is more. just yes, right? Yeah. I mean, that's. I think we've reached the spot where we're like, comfortably, uh-huh, yeah. There's too much product for us to keep our brain around all the cards. Right. Yeah. Like, there, it's just, you can't buy every product. You can't know all the cards. You can't know every printing. We're just past It becomes that white point noise. Magic. Whereas it used to be moments of, like, celebration. Like, oh, new cards, previews. Ooh, cool. Ooh, did you see this? And you could sort of sit and stew on something. And sure, like, it could have been more at that point. But mm-hmm. where it is now, it feels like they just opened the floodgates. And instead of going from, like Josh had 50 to 100, we went from 50... Or fifty to sixty to seventy to eighty, we just went straight to a hundred. Yeah, there, there, it, it was exponential for sure. Because I don't I mean, think they can do much more at this point, right? Can they release more product? Don't Maybe. challenge them. I mean, Jimmy. how many? We've been saying that for yeah, years. Hey, somewhere going challenge accepted. Challenge. Yeah. I know, Gavin. You're not in charge of how the much. Year product of the year of the year of Commander. <laughs> more product. Well, Rachel, you. Um, I know you have a, a specific view on this because we've talked yeah. about it before, mm. and I think Jimmy and I are kind of the old curmudgeon been around and in this game like longer than you. Yeah. And I think, you know, we have unfortunately maybe, um, you know, been comparing it to what it was in 2014. And that may or may not be fair. So uh, yeah. I'd like to hear your sort of outlook on this, this product because we always couch it in this negativity. Let's be honest. Like there's too much product and therefore that is not great. And I right. think... Or, I'm uncomfortable with the amount of product there. Yeah, I don't yeah. like that. I think it's bad that there's too much. And I think yeah. in s- some ways, you know, you've made this point, and I do agree that that's not the healthiest or the most fair or even the proper way to look at it. Yeah, I, I think we're at this point where we need to accept that this is the amount of product that's coming out. This is this is the new standard. We are to expect. Oh, they know. go into standard too? Okay. Man, yeah, yeah, standard's yeah. crazy. We're, we're plugging it right that? in there. Megatron in standard. But it's... We, we just have to adjust our expectation. We This much product right. is going to come out. So if you stop dealing with that question, it's like maybe we can get them to release less. It's, they're never going to release less. So how do we adjust our relationship with the product? That's a very good point. And it's one that d- dives much deeper than just like, oh, I, I like Magic the Gathering, which is like, how do you live a healthy life? and decide to not care as much about certain aspects of it, but still yeah. love the thing that it's you're doing. It's engage with the parts that excite you and, and and like directly target you. If you're like, I'm a Warhammer person, and I'm psyched about Warhammer. And right. then you can engage with that in a, and, and ignore Baldur's Gate or ignore Double Masters or Bonfinity. Um, and I... I think we need to let go of the expectation that we're going to know all the cards and right. that it, that good magic players know all the cards and know all the commanders and know all the rules and it's get to the point where we're like, you know what? There's too many. <laughs> There's too many co- cards for me to know and it doesn't make me a worse magic player and it doesn't make wizards evil or greedy or bad. It just means they want to make more toys for us. <laughs> Yeah. Which is great, there, right? Yeah, there are a lot of forces at work when it comes to how to release a game of this size internationally in many different languages simultaneously mm-hmm. throughout the entire year. Um, and I firmly believe that like the best 
version of humanity is one that plays together all the time instead mm-hmm. of you know kills each other does any of those bad things mm-hmm. and magic is a thing that does help us move towards that now obviously within the world of magic we have a lot of people that have very strong feelings and emotions about it because we came to this game for a reason and that reason is being played out in front of us yeah so i do like the perspective here which is instead of just deciding to be so plugged in that you're outraged by whatever other people are outraged by mm-hmm. you can also right like that's almost like a set release is what is the next outrage that's going to come out and how much am i going to play into that game of the right. outrage so you like, can is choose... that why we play magic really no nah, no nah, no there's no to be way upset about transformers yeah <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't know it existed and you found out five years later would you care no probably not so you can probably help restructure yeah. your view of something by just honing in the lens as to why it matters to you and look internally instead and i and i do think that there is there are upsides to this much product coming out because like I'm a I'm a brewer. When I build a deck, I'm excited. I get on Scryfall. I want to do a deep dive. I want to search keywords. I want to find cards I've never found before that are perfect with my commander. Mm-hmm. And I had gotten to the point where I was like, I know most of the playable cards in Commander. I, w- I can find even like the sort of weird bad ones, the hundred and tenth cards on the list. I know those ones. And we're beyond that now. I'm <laughs> I'm I cannot keep track of all of the cards that are coming out. And this makes for this makes Scryfall like an adventure again, where you're like, oh my God, this card came, card came out in the Neon Dynasty modified Commander, deck. Right. I've never seen this right, before. Right. This is so powerful in my deck. And it means that like, like when you're a kid and you sit down across the table from somebody and you see somebody's card and you're like, I've never seen this card before. What does this card do? <laughs> That should go in this deck. And it, it leaves room for wonder and excitement and um, sort of letting go of the fact that like, my personality is being the magic guy and uh, trying to engage with the game in uh, a more exciting and magical way, right? Like we're talking about a wizard, they don't know all the magic. Like there's no it's one true. wizard that's like, I know all the magic forever. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's wait, a wait, journey. Wait. It's clearly just, Gavin Verhey. Gavin Verhey <laughs> is the one person who knows every magic card. <laughs> he actually does. Yeah, he does. I've yeah, talked to him a lot. Yeah, it's wild. Um, but I, I just think that we need to move on from this question because we've, we're getting the same answer. Well, I like that point because it's impossible to imagine a world where any company the size, you know, multi-billion dollar yeah. mm-hmm. international worldwide company decides to downgrade, downscale, release less of whatever it is they're making when they're being successful, generating a lot of revenue for what, like what would cause them to do that? That it makes no sense. So we, you're right. We're in the world and there is too much product and this is what it's going to be. And whether we're at the top and we're finding the, the ceiling or we're in the middle somewhere, I don't know, but going back to 2014 is just not going to happen. Yeah. It just doesn't make sense. And I think if we're being honest, Magic was under monetized and oh yeah, too little sure. stuff was coming out before. Yeah. We did a draft a couple weeks ago for Innistrad, original Innistrad. Um, Double feature? No. <laughs> OG Innistrad with spider hey, spawning and everything. So we were going to do that draft and, you know, <laughs> I haven't drafted that thing in like a long time. Yeah. And so what I did is I listened to some old limited resources episodes, just one or two from All that right. era. Mm-hmm to kind of just refresh my memory. We're going to draft on Sunday and I want to remember, you know, I know spider spawning, but I'm just trying to remember all the other right. archetypes, what was good, whatever. And the the big thing that struck me when doing that was I, I scroll all the way back mm. through Apple Podcast app, which sucks, but the <laughs> yeah. Spotify didn't have that far back. Yeah. Oh, wow. And I'm yeah. scrolling, 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 and I get to Innistrad. And I'm like, well, I want to find something because it, it was like Sunset Show or whatever. Mm. They didn't call it that then, but whatever it was. And and I the, the big thing that struck me is they had like 20 something episodes about Innistrad because wow. the sets came out so infrequently that now it, you've, you know, five, six weeks, next sets are already getting previewed and you're talking about that. And it must be great when you're a limited content. We've uh, never been in a better time because for a limited you, you don't have to think right. of, but they were, they were like, well, let's talk about how to play combat tricks in limited. Let's talk about blah, blah, blah. They had to just come up with topics mm. uh, because the sets would get so long in the tooth that, there was just, you know, you can't just can't talk about one limited environment for three months straight. <laughs> no. yeah. yeah, so I think that brought into shark. Can you imagine talking about New Cabana for, for like... three months? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, so that brought into sort of focus for me the fact that like, yes, there's a lot of product now, but there was too little before. And Jimmy, we, in the mm. old days, remember how in between sets sometimes we would be like 
racking our brains. What do we talk about? What are we going to talk about? Yeah. Yeah. We'd just be coming up. And and I think it's gone the other way now for us for content of like, we feel like we're always in set review mode and we don't get to do those evergreen topics more often. Mm -hmm. And I, I think there's maybe a happy medium, but it was definitely too infrequent before. So mm-hmm. that's the first point that I think is really good. Yeah. yeah. We're going to be in this world. It's not all bad. In a lot of ways, it's better than there is before. And then I like to think of things in terms of like <clears throat> pluses and minuses because most decisions are not all good and they're not all bad. And right. you're yeah. just kind of weighing. And to be fair, like the minuses are there and I want to acknowledge them for people. Like mm-hmm. there is this idea that like less engagement with the game makes me less likely. I like to think of it in terms of like who's getting a tattoo of something magic related on their arm, right? Those yeah. are people that are really have a deep connection to the game. Mm-hmm. And one of the things about having a deep connection to anything is feeling like you really know it inside and out. Like if if you're having a, if you're really into Star Wars mm-hmm. and you're involved in a conversation with other people who are really into Star Wars, right, right. if they start talking about something in the Star World of Star Wars that you haven't seen or you don't know what it is, it feels like you're less invested in that than them and mm-hmm. you're probably less likely to be a person with a tattoo on your arm about Star Wars than they are because Deep connections are what cause you to get a tattoo of something. Yeah, Mm -hmm. of course. So there's that negative downside of like as more stuff comes out and I feel like I just don't have the ability to have that deep connection. My connection maybe it feels a little more shallow. Mm -hmm. Then it does feel like I'm less connected to the game. It's less important to me. It's less something that I want to sort of park my personality and my life on. Obviously, we have a YouTube channel about it. So (laughs) I'm getting a tattoo. Don't get me wrong. But what is our tattoo going to be? We can talk about that later. (laughs) But that, you know, they used to have this stat and I don't know if it's the same anymore, but I remember Mark Rosard saying it at some point that like the average magic player plays magic for about nine years. Mm. And I can't help but think like with all this product coming out, is that remaining the same? Is it shortening? Are we going to do the poll in mm-hmm. five or six years and find, mm-hmm. well, the average Magic player plays for six years now, mm-hmm. which sounds bad, but let's say that in the same amount of time, there are three times as many Magic players as there used to be. Mm-hmm. Then all of a sudden, it becomes a little more money again. Well, that could be good for the game. That could be bad. But I think acknowledging the fact that like it's not all pluses and it's not all minuses is yeah. fair. Course, yeah. yeah. And then... Uh, the other the, in the plus column, the thing I can really see, and I love what you said about brewing, and I remember the, the original days of Magic, right? Like, people don't know the days before the internet because <laughs> I'm old, but we didn't even know what all the cards were. They didn't release a list of all the cards that existed, and you would hear these rumors about crazy cards that, like, Johnny played in this game, this home yeah. game over <laughs> two towns over, and you'd be like, I gotta find that card, and then you'd get it, and you'd be like, this is not anything like what it was explained to me. You know? They're playing this wrong. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. But that discovery doesn't exist in our modern world, right? Like, we see all For the anything. cards, and they're previewed <laughs> before we can ever get our hands on yeah. them, and yeah. so one way to synthesize that a little bit is just this, this fire hose of cards that are coming with us and mm-hmm. you don't have time to look at every one. It's just a lot are shooting past you. And so then, yeah, you the upside is you get that discovery of that unknown of like hearing rumors about things that are happening and not really, you know, knowing. Yeah. And new metas and new things being developed, right? Yeah. We're talking about like exploring unknown parts of magic as a result of all these new players and yeah. strategies and cards. Yeah, finding things, doing things. I mean, it's possible right now you can put together a combination of cards that just no one's ever done because they're yeah. the raw amount of possible yeah. combinations that there are. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. So I like your idea of like, I do think we need to rewire our brains a little bit and we're probably, you know, partially responsible for the negativity about it. I'll take responsibility for it a little bit. And I, I think like, you know, we need to look on the bright side because it's not all down. Da- it's all down. It can feel also, that way yeah, for content yeah. creators, especially too, because yeah. it, it is something that we have to, you know, mm-hmm. being consume. jaded yeah. is something that we should probably try to avoid in life about most things. Cause it just means that you're looking at low life, your life in life in general with less positivity. Mm-hmm. And if you just look at your life with full positivity, not many people do this, but they're like the happiest people. They're like little monks, you yeah. know, they're having the happiest yeah. lives. It's also like being upset <laughs> about something that isn't going to change. And we have no impact of over is not value. It just, just hurts you. Not the key <laughs> yeah. to a healthy right. life. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, it's not going to be a healthy. It just hurts you. Like yeah. you can tweet, so much and it's not going to change oh, anything yeah. going on oh, over in Hasbro. <laughs> I'll talk about that later. So, uh, <laughs> good reminder for yeah. everyone out there to watch a movie though called Everything Everywhere All at Once. Oh, it's it really basically good. basically talks about what we're talking about here. Yeah. yeah. When faced with infinity, how do you process it in a way that allows you to move forward? Yeah. Uh, speaking of all of the new cards, all yeah. of the new product that came all out right. this year, there were some really amazing cards that came out in 2022, and we're going to talk about some of the most powerful cards. Yeah, let's. I, we've put a list of nominees yes. of best new cards of the year here. Mm-hmm. What if we each picked two yeah. secretly right now, mm-hmm. um, and then we can talk about those yeah. so we don't have to list 20 oh, cards. It's like a double feature. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't two? know how to pick two. Why would I say two? Oh, crap. 
Here we go. Uh, well, I mean, I know which uh, first. Pick, yeah. I'm going to go first. Okay, you go. Yeah. SNC Triome Cycle. This is from Streets of New Capenna. Mm-hmm. Now, the naming, okay. If you can tell me all these names, then I'll Why give you a thousand bucks. Why did they over the name? They, got, they always get too clever. I know. It's Don't too pay cute. attention to the top because it's impossible to remember everything. Just pay attention to the fact that these lands have three basic land types on every single one of them. Fetch lands, a lot of different lands can grab these, and you just instantly fix your mana. Plus, you can cycle them away for three mana late in the game. Yep. Never seen anyone do that, but you can. Yeah, can. I've, I've done only it. seen it in limited yeah. in, in an act of desperation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you're doing I did that, it. if that's the best thing you could do on a turn of magic, I you're spent losing. four but, uh, mana to maybe find three mana to <laughs> maybe find a swords to plowshares. Yeah, because you did not have did any mana left after. after. No. <laughs> Okay. I don't know, interaction? Don't that, yeah. One in 50 times, <laughs> okay. though, you will find it. All right, yeah. that was your number one, Jimmy, or your number two? That's my number one. All okay. right. I just love them lands. Do you have your number What's one? What's yours, Rachel? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I mean, I, let's stick in the land cycle. Uh, I I think Bo Seju, who endures, yeah. and those channel uh, lands. Those, that was my next in the choice. channel lands cycle is... Um, some of the more powerful lands that they have ever created. Yeah. <laughs> they're free. They're spells. You can't counterspell them. Um, it, they're... They do things that are you want to do. It's not like, a oh, yeah. this might come up. No, it's going to come up. Yeah. yeah. In particular, the green... I, I mean, all of them except the red one are like insane. If you have one, put it in your deck. Yeah. I mean, the green one is the best one. I think the blue one is second. Yeah. Yep. Uh, then clearly. Black. And the, the other two are... Well, black I might mean, be playable, blue, but, but I don't Black think... is both mill and return a creature from yeah. your graveyard. It's yeah. very I mean, good. It's, but... Yeah. Or a planeswalker. I, I think it's like... The green one only costing one in a green, and if you have a commander out, just green. It's, it's insane. It's a little it's offensive. A, it's, <laughs> I'm personally hurt All by right. the Bosejo activation. Channel. And you, and you can oh, reduce the, the cost it's of It's ridiculous. It. It's crazy. Yeah, I, I think those are the... They're like, how, like, the they're like, print it. No, do it again, but make it more for commander. No, do it again, but make it even more for commander. That's how these lands went from just tap for mana to that. I'm really torn about what yeah, my number yeah, one is. Yeah, yeah, this is a big one. Who's your number one? I think I'm going to say Black Market Connections. Uh, I knew you were gonna say but it. how full many game nights full <laughs> set, full <laughs> set. watch the live episode if you have and it's, it's incredible that's every black game. deck i'm putting this in there and i'm so happy every time and I you can splash it, it and, and yes sometimes i play it incorrectly because i want full value out of it but mm, it doesn't yeah. matter it does everything yeah, yeah. that's pretty good i love the card yeah it's nuts. Okay, what's your number 2 Jimmy? Uh my number 2 is probably maybe what your number 2 is going to be. Actually no, I'll change it. I like farewell. This oh. is a board wipe that if you just need, because at this point too, infinite cards, infinite enchantments sometimes enter the battlefield. You're like, I cannot deal with this. Mm. I will lose unless I have farewell. Farewell, I think, is more of a I can finally win this game card than a lot of cards in Magic. But Sage just bounces, destroys one thing, right? Mm. Yeah. But Sa- Gives him land too. Yeah, and farewell is going to event like I think like if you were in a, a stickler of a situation, a sticky situation. Farewell will save your butt. Uh, it sure will. And the fact that it chooses one or more is just yeah. like... Artifacts, creatures, all of them. enchantments, Get rid of graveyards. Anything. It's, right? yeah. you, it's very cool. It, it does the job. And it's mm-hmm. exiling, which is the big difference maker. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we've got to say it. It's a uh, displacer kitten is going to be Ooh, my yeah. number two, three. I'm so glad you picked that, so I don't have to. I somebody's <laughs> got to say it. Uh, this card is ridiculous. It is three and a blue for a cat beast two two. Whenever you cast a non creature spell, exile up to one target non land permanent you control. That could be your kitten if you want. Uh, That's then so stupid that return it can itself. the card to the battlefield under its owner's control. Why isn't Dead Eye Navigator better, Josh? Yeah, that was somebody was like, you know what. <laughs> Man, dead eye. It's not that good anymore. Yeah. Again, Gavin was like, challenge accepted. <laughs> what else do players love? Cats. I'm sorry. Gavin doesn't design every card. So, yeah. you know, but I, I'm just going to blame him because Glenn. He knows or, all of yeah, them. Yeah, Glenn's so. not there anymore. Uh, and yeah, I like yeah. Melissa. So <laughs> um, we like Gavin too. Don't yeah, worry. That's two, why we're Two big problems with this card, right? Can target itself. Yep. Yeah. Why does it protect itself? And why doesn't the things come back at the next end step, which we've already, like, I mm-hmm. thought they figured yeah. this out. Like, There's you don't... two levels of flicker, and this is the better one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, in many decks, it's just another, uh, uh, and the Infinite. engine that untaps uh, your artifacts. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I scrounge that? Paradox. Paradox. Yeah, Paradox. Yeah, Paradox. Yeah. Yeah, Paradox. Uh, yeah. Because you can just cast a thing, untap a rock, cast a thing, untap, untap a the rock. rock. Da, 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 da. Or it enters the battlefield tapped. What about that? Nope. 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 Just comes on back. What if it was just... Come on back, Artifacts boy. or enchant. Nope. Nope. Also instance. Yeah, it's uh, it's very strong. Yeah, I'm so glad you picked that one. I think best... We purposely call this best new cards of the year because best is... It's pretty wide open. What yeah. does best mean? Exactly. Most powerful, it might be Displacer Kitten because mm-hmm. I, I don't think I've seen it yet get cast where they didn't win that turn. Yeah. Um, it, I've never seen it just like cast, kind of get a little value. Is, yeah. I've literally 
five, I've only seen it five or six times in play, uh, but every single time it's been cast. Paradox Engine basically cast, yeah. go off, win. Yeah, um, it's insane. So I'm glad I don't have to pick that now. Yeah, then this yours. makes uh, Professional Facebreaker. Yeah, yeah. One. you yeah. also played that one. On I love it's ramp and card draw. It's really good. Both my cards are three mana spells that are ramp and card mm-hmm. draw. Yeah. I guess I'm a certain kind of player. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> the cards are actually very similar. I didn't even think about it. I uh, like lands. <laughs> All right, we're also going to talk about the most powerful new commanders that came out in 2022. Again, these are the ones that are just top of the list. We we feel like they have the most oomph behind them. Mm-hmm. Um, are we? Do we want to do top one? There's a few. Uh, this is a shorter list. Mine is very. Let's easy. Let's each do one, and then maybe we can see All where right. we go from there. Jimmy, you you already have your picks. Oh, absolutely. Because okay. I built the darn deck. Yeah. <laughs> it actually transformed from another team or deck of mine. It's Miram Sentinel Worm. Yeah. This oh, yeah. is just the best dragon commander I believe ever printed. Yeah. Now, they did limit it by saying it's a non-token dragon that gets sort of copied. But here's the thing. It makes copies of legendaries. That's not a limitation. It would just keeps it from going it infinite. Would, yeah, exactly. Otherwise, it would <laughs> yeah, with exactly. one cast. Yeah, yeah well, that would be kind of cool, though. <laughs> that would make it more uh, powerful. <laughs> but it enters the battlefield. Yeah. It doesn't care about cast. And that is the easiest way to nerf this card. Or even make it tapped, right? A lot yeah. of different ways to nerf it. But they were just like, open the doors and give it Ward 2, which is kind of hex proof <laughs> It's insane. The Ward 2 sucks. It's Ward 2 is brutal. It's the worst because you're like ah yeah and then you cast a single dragon and you're just gonna start winning almost instantaneously it's or insane. god forbid you ghostly flicker something you, that was already yeah. there if you clone it two flicker things and, clone, oh, yeah, clone it yeah get, oh, cloning god. miram with uh, i played against it bald at baldur's gate limited it was a miram oh deck and they had it was terrible dream. we were like okay well this person must be murdered they used, now they used all of their luck on that one <laughs> yeah Gosh, it, it feels brutal. like you're playing marvel snap at that point <laughs> you know you're just like double it double it yeah it was crazy it was crazy all right uh so that yeah that that's a, that was the first one I put on the list, like, immediately. Easy pick for me. Uh, the most powerful one that was printed this year for me is also uh, my least favorite commander design that has come out recently. It <laughs> is Joda, yeah. the unifier, uh, Joda. white, blue, black, red, green. Legendary creatures you control get plus X plus X, where X is the number of legendary creature spells you control. Whenever you cast a legendary spell from your hand, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a legendary non-land card with lesser mana value. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Put the rest on the bottom of your library and random order legendary cascade i it this is mana cheating yeah. this is card advantage yeah. and it is a payoff yeah. and it is in five colors with no restriction to me I the five hate color it. is the worst part about <laughs> yes, it yes i agree it's like yeah. what you were saying I agree. earlier where they could have left the door open to yeah yeah but now this is the legends matter deck for all eternity if he was just guy i love this card yeah exactly it limits it in a lot of ways yeah. too you might not be able to find legendaries for certain effects and things but nope you got the choice of all just the cards all ever. the stuff for all the thing you get to do all the things when you do one thing that's not hard to do yeah. this is uh, an, if they untap with this you're you, gonna lose yeah, you're gonna lose I, you're uh, two but more so joe oh, yeah. joe is insane <laughs> yeah joe is insane. the unifier it's in the name though he really all finds colors. all the legends he onto the battlefield it was like yeah. Yeah. Joda, exactly. the partial <laughs> unifier just guy version no, no he doesn't say he's unifying people for his side he's unifying uh, okay. people to combat him to yeah. try okay. and stop him okay yeah. okay yeah, yeah. Joda the arch enemy yeah when i exist everyone else is unified against me that's what yours josh Well, I think, again, it's the similar thing where what does most powerful mean? Does most powerful mean at its most powerful, what is it? Mm -hmm. Or does it mean what its medium power level is, what its average power level is? I think Mm -hmm. at its most powerful, I think it's Evelyn. Yeah. uh, Because of the um, World Fire Dragon combo. Gorger Dragon. World Gorger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was thinking of World Fire the card. Nope. Because of... (laughs) Because of the World Gorger Dragon combo, and this just immediately became like that deck's de facto yeah. commander and made that deck quite a bit stronger than it was before. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's probably that. Mm-hmm. Um, at the top end? Yeah, sure. that, that, that would get my vote. Just, yeah. you know, as, at its most powerful. But I think that if you're not, if you don't have that combo in your deck, then it becomes a lot more fair. And the mm-hmm. average mm-hmm. Evelyn deck that's not built around combo mm-hmm. is probably less powerful than either of the ones that both of you said. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. Evelyn's pretty good. Uh, to be fair, this year, I think they've done a really good job of limiting these generically powerful commanders. Uh, a lot of the ones on this list are powerful in a specific way. Miram is a dragon commander. Joda's a legendary commander. 
Um, or like Oshintai is very powerful, but it is specific to shrines in a large way. Um, there's no Golos. There's, there's no, no Golos, Golos this year. Oh, um, oh my gosh, Trazin. I totally uh, forgot about Trazin. Yes, oh, there Trazin are, there are two <laughs> insane combo commanders that Trazin they printed this year. Trazin might be more year. powerful than Evelyn, actually. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah Evelyn yeah, requires Tra- a little more setup for sure. Uh, yeah, Tra- Trazin the Infinite and uh, Preston the Vanisher it's is the also name. something we, we talked about recently as an insane yeah, combo yeah. piece in the Preston's command zone. The, the nice thing about these two cards, though, is they're in one color. Yeah, monocolor. Yeah. Limits you by a lot. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I wanted to move on to this next part because it's cards we got wrong, and I mm-hmm. realized in my message I should have rewritten it because I think I underestimated Displacer Kitten and Archivist and mm. Deep Known Terror Mancer. Oh, okay. Specifically, I see. I see. yeah, yeah. I think Displacer Kitten for me because I was like four mana. It's a crowded slot. If you want to use it, you have to only use it to try and win the game, I think. Yeah. It's not in a deck otherwise. It can be for some fun value plays, but it's not really, I think, the point yeah. of the card, I guess, in a lot of ways. So I think that's why I maybe underestimated it at first. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's better than you thought it was. Yeah, it's yeah. much, much better. Yeah. But it, it has to be a very specific thing they're trying to do with it. But once it does it, it's the Paradox Engine. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't write it down, but I, had, I came up with something while we were talking about other mm-hmm. stuff that I think I got wrong a little bit was... And this isn't always on set reviews because I think, you know, we kind of were splitting the set reviews yeah. between multiple people and I wasn't all, always involved in them. But just mm-hmm. like you still evaluate cards when you look at them on your own, right? You yeah, think, of is that good or not? Uh, the backgrounds, I think, in general, oh, right. um, I just kind of underestimated. And I don't think I considered them as much as how they would just be in the 99 of decks. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. right, the evaluation was more about, and we did do a backgrounds episode that I was part of, but the evaluations there were more about if you put them in your command zone, which I mm-hmm. think is. Also more powerful than I thought, but I, I think we were closer there. Yeah. But I've been seeing a lot more backgrounds within the 99s of decks, and they tend to be a lot better and a lot more playable there than I yeah. I, I thought originally. Well, they play, mm-hmm. and it's like, oh, your commander just went from like a B to a A+. Plus. Yeah. yeah, especially <laughs> if they have partners, too. Now, mm-hmm. all of a sudden, this background is interacting with two specific right. cards that they knew they were going to have, and it yeah. can be like, yeah, it can be pretty awesome. So, yeah, yeah I totally it's... got those, those. I underestimated those. Uh, I had a couple of cards that I got super excited about this year that I, uh, I after playing, I are a little less playable than I thought they were. Uh, the main one to hear is Respite. Uh, it is a five mana instant. This is the fog that for every creature that's attacking, you get a land. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Five and mana. I, yeah. It's, it, five mana is expensive, but I was like, it's like Ink Shield. You get value for being attacked. And the difference is Ink Shield is a win con. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and Jahira is like, all right, I got... 15 lands and they have 100 creatures still. Um, <laughs> I don't even have that many basics. I still need a board wipe. Yeah, it didn't solve yeah. my problem. I still need yeah. something. Deck thinning. So that, that was a big one for me. Uh, the other one that I was disappointed in was Seize the Spotlight. I think there's some decks that this is still great, but it's a little less generically good uh, okay, I'll read than it. I. Please. Two in a red, Seize the Spotlight Sorcery. Each opponent chooses fame or fortune. For each player who chose fame, you gain control of a creature that player controls until end of turn. Untap those creatures and they gain haste. However, if they choose fortune, you get a draw card and create a treasure token so it seems like everyone's just going to choose fortune or fame if they only have a creature seems like a lot yeah the the interesting thing i I was like okay if if you if they give you two creatures and you draw and make a treasure that's pretty good right Um, for three mana yeah and i was like if they all give you treasure in a card that's amazing that's three mana draw three make three treasures that's incredible uh and i think the the key difference is like if you're playing seize the spotlight you need a sack outlet (laughs) Ah, uh and it has to be in a deck that wants sack outlets i thought it was going to be a little bit more of a red good stuff card and it's not quite there it's a little more narrow than you Unle- yeah. yeah unless you can take advantage of them giving you the creatures in a way that they're not interested in it's not uh, and it's, yeah it's sometimes they'll be like yeah take my creature Have fun. yeah it's like oh you get to attack for four cool cool nice. give it back to me thank you <laughs> give it back i want it back <laughs> all right okay wow i feel like it's falling asleep. There's so much. That's, My brain is yeah. like getting peaks right now. So That's much. just the new stuff that came out this year. There was a ton of reprints that came out, and we are going to talk about I them like in asleep. a little bit. Don't say that bit. to the audience, Jimmy. No, no, no. You should stay awake, but I'm going to take a nap. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy will be back. <laughs> My head hurts. Yeah, we haven't even touched on the reprints, and every yeah. year we do this episode, we do a deep dive on how good the reprints were for the year mm-hmm. and exactly sort of how much value they created in comparison to other years. Mm-hmm. And it's always interesting to see because last year I think was one of the worst reprint years mm-hmm. in recent memory especially considering the amount of new product that's coming out so it remains to be seen whether this year was better than that and I say remains to be seen because we're going to take a quick break but don't go anywhere we'll be right back after this message from our sponsors and now this episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. help 
How do you do? I'm Oskier, the Reconstructor. When I go to work on a reconstruction job, fixing up ancient artifacts and such, the first thing I do is check the gold dang manual. <laughs> but when I wanted to work on myself, well, I'll tell you what, there ain't no manual for the human brain. I check the mystical archives and everything. That's why I turn to a professional licensed therapist. See, in my line of work, when you got a specialty job, you need an expert contractor. A therapist is like that for your mind, helping you to navigate challenging emotions and understand the inner workings of the complex engine that is you. And as the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists, available 100% online. Plus, it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a the therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Thanks to BetterHelp, inaccessible therapy is a relic of the past. Speaking of which, check out these relics of the past. I shined them up pretty. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash Command Zone. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Command Zone. Crap, I'm late for draft night. I guess I'll just grab takeout. It's the fastest, cheapest thing. That's a factor fiction. Factor fiction. Uh... How long have you been out there? Longer than it takes to prepare a meal from Factor, that's for sure. You see, Factor delivers nutritious, chef-crafted meals that are ready to eat in just two minutes. So takeout being the fastest, cheapest option is now a pure fiction. Factor is perfect for the on-the-go lifestyle. With no shopping, cooking, or cleaning, you'll have even more time to do the things you love. Every meal is dietitian approved. And with 30 plus choices each week, including vegetarian and protein plus options, you can eat healthy without ever getting bored. Oh man, that sounds great. I really wish I had a Parmesan. Parmesan crusted chicken with Italian veggies. Wow, this is delicious. Wait, where were you hiding it? You don't want to know. And that's a factor fact. Head to go.factor75.com slash command60 and use code command60 to get 60% off your first box. That's code command60 at go.factor75.com slash command60 to get 60% off your first box. Oh, man, great nap. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, they had to wait 45 minutes for my <laughs> for me to get a little bit of rest in. But now he's bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. I am so ready to talk about reprints. Yeah, <laughs> that is the question, right? A bunch of cards being printed every year does that mean we get better reprints as a result because if the answer is not yes then it makes you feel even worse about the situation and we don't want that so uh one thing that we did last year is we were like hey reprints these are the cards we want to see reprinted they mm -hmm. need to be reprinted so let's quickly just go through the list of cards that we said last uh last year in review that we think should be reprinted so dockside extortionist mm -hmm. was reprinted right yes jessica's will yes smothering tithe yes yep. Ristic study. Uh, it is in Jumpstart 2022. But it, that the, as we talked about before, the Jumpstart yeah. reprints are not, they don't really count. Not a big one. Yeah, Necropotence. It's in a secret lair. Secret lair countdown kit. No, not that really. doesn't count yeah. as a reprint. Uh, Guardian Project. No, nope. didn't get reprinted. Sword of Feast and Famine. Mm -mm. Nope. Fidel Canori. Oh hey, yeah, that one did. I know it did because I signed a million of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's felt bad every version. time. I love it. <laughs> triomes, and we met the original Triomes yes. reprinting. They did not get reprinted, but we did get five new ones. New ones, mm -hmm. yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Uh, Battle Bond Lands, yeah. sure did. Yep. And all of the Medallion Cycle was the last mm -hmm. thing we asked for. That did not happen. Not this year, nope. Yeah. All right, and now let's look at the top reprints overall from this year. I just want to go through a little bit of the methodology for finding the data that we got uh, for this. Uh, we're not going to count Secret Layer reprints. We're not going to count Jumpstart 22 re reprints. Uh, 2020, yeah. Uh, two, two. Two, 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 two. two uh, two. Reprints. It's the stuff that where they added a lot of cards that really in affected uh, the price. And I looked at the price on the date that I did all the research, which yep. was on December 8th. And then I compared it to two months before they announced the uh, reprint of this card. So, so I'm comparing those like two from prices. From before the announced reprint to now. To now. Right. What, what was uh, the what price kind of change? Impact. All right. So let's kick things off with uh, the lands the ones that we just talked about which are the battle bond lands they were reprinted in Baldur's gate yeah we're gonna go through the the reprints in Baldur's gate which people do not care for these reprints but i will say that uh it did make a dent it did indeed well just looking at this graph if you're watching the video morphic pool luxury suite were both around 30 bucks and went down to about six to seven dollars mm -hmm. that's 80 percent Plus, we're seeing about an average of sort of 75% for the full-on uh, reduction, which is great. Huge. Yeah, they all went down by a lot. 
Yeah, they're all under ten dollars, and they all started above ten. Yeah, uh, not the, just above ten, multiples of ten in some multiples cases. of ten in some cases. So that was a huge reprint that I was much needed and very well received. Uh, Kindred Discovery was another big one. It was at twenty four sixty four, and it got all the way down to five dollars. Nice, it's very exciting. Yeah, Bramble Sovereign, Great Creature, and Blade of Selves, which I think was only printed in the Commander prog- prior to this. Yes. So that went from thirty bucks to three ninety, which is. That's what you want to see with a reprint. Eighty-seven percent decrease Which in the means, price on Blade of Cells. Yeah, and again, another product of having so many cards out is instead of being like, "Oh, this is the only good equipment." There's a lot of choices, so I think that's why Blade of Cells. It was just a product of its not being around as mm-hmm. to why it had a high price point. Yeah, I think a lot of people probably bought four dollar Blade of Cells and realized what we've all realized. It's not that great. Yeah. It's not that great. There yeah. was it's a, about a four dollar <laughs> card, I guess. <laughs> it was a similar issue with Kindred yeah. Discovery, where there just wasn't that many copies of it, yeah. and now there yeah. are, which is yeah. great. All right, now we're going to talk about Double Masters twenty twenty two next. Mm-hmm. And Rachel, when we started this, you were kind of we were talking about it, and you kind of you know intimated to me that mm-hmm. you grumble grumble, you didn't think that Double Masters probably actually impacted the prices yep. of the ah. cards that much because it was already in high price packs. Yep. There wasn't as much of the product. And so, you know, you went in and did the research here and... I was pleasantly surprised. <laughs> Turns out when you reprint cards and people are excited about them, the price goes down. And I gotta say, though, I had I had the same uh, yeah. thought in my head that you did, which was in my mind, I was like, it did. I didn't think it did that much. Yeah. So... It, it, and it really did. So I I pulled out all of the all of the cards that were above ten dollars. And I in Battle Bond there was the five lands and then the three other cards. So there's only eight cards that were above ten dollars. In the whole set. It. In the in, in uh, Baldur's Gate. In Baldur's Gate, yes. Yeah. That started above ten dollars, which is not great. But uh, in Double Masters, <laughs> there was forty cards. Wow. In this set that started above, above ten dollars. Twenty one mythics and nineteen rares. Yes. Uh, and On average, this is great though. I think we should just say this before we go into the details. Yeah, the twenty-one mythics, on average, went down fifty-five point three percent on average, and the rares, on average, went down sixty-seven percent. So that's comparable to the battle bond lands, which would like right. It is in terms of percentage. I want to say that the mythics is an interesting uh, situation because that is deeply affected by the imperial seal oh, drop right. and also the thrumming <laughs> stone drop, which were both around ninety percent or more. Depre- uh, decrease in price. Wow. So I, I think those probably skew it a little bit higher. But that, still looking across, I see a lot of 60s and mm-hmm. 40s. So it's still up there for sure. And the we should main... say the Imperial Seal, Yeah, that's a bit of a interesting case where yeah. like it was worth $737.70 before, but that price wasn't because of how powerful it is. Mm-hmm. That just... price was because it was from P3K. Right. Yep. And so it just very few copies existed because if you actually look at the card i think it's like not as good as demonic tutor not as good as vampiric yeah. tutor those are both way cheaper than yeah. the 700 dollars price tag maybe top five tutors maybe it's closer to beseech the queen than yeah. it is to demonic for sure yes. yeah wherever yeah. you want to put it in there it just isn't worth 700 dollars. Yeah. yep so of course yeah when they reprint it, it immediately falls by a lot because mm-hmm. i don't know about you but i still don't have imperial seal really in any of my decks because i don't run a lot of tutors and i definitely don't want three tutors and it's yeah. the th- at, at the best, it's the third it's best. It's the third, yeah. at the best, yeah. yeah. Uh, Thrumming Stone is a similar situation. It was a, a $49, $49.66 going into this. There was only one printing of it. It is now $2.44, which is where it belongs. Exactly now you where it belongs. build Shadow Ward Apostles decks. There you go. You could, you could Big indeed. budget save. Man, that um, means mine was worth $50 and it went down to $2. Yeah. I want to I wanna okay. talk about this on average because I think <laughs> going into Double Masters, there was a lot of Commander staples that were hovering around the $40 range. Right. There was... And that was higher than has ever been in my like commander playing time. Usually the expensive yeah. staples are right around 20 where it's like, it's $22 for the expensive cards. But this was like every, like smothering tithe was over $40. Dockside. Dockside extortionist was almost a hundred dollars. It's yeah. what, like, what happens when they took all of 2021 off. They did not yeah. reprint very much stuff at all right. for a whole year. It was. So it, stuff that yeah. would have gotten kicked back down just, you know, went up twice as much. I yeah. Think. Bitter Double Blossom matches, was yeah. 40. Tons of things were above $40 and it brought those prices back down into like sort of a manageable range, which is closer to the $20. It, yeah. Mm-hmm. 10, between 10 and 20. Yeah. yeah um, Concordia which, Crossroads. Yeah. Bitter yeah. Blossom. Yes. Yeah, Sensei's so Divining Top plummeted. Uh, Teferi's Protection plummeted. It was... You could tell how badly we needed these reprints, <laughs> I think, by the uh, yeah. by the impact of some of these percentage points. Agreed. And just tons of great cards for Commander here. 
mm-hmm. right? Just lots of cards that you will probably end up playing or see play now. Like I remember when uh, Bloom Tender was just so hard to get. Yeah. Oh my God. And now yeah. Bloom Tender is available to everyone out there. $8. One, one of the biggest ones that I was excited to see was Phyrexian Altar. Oh yeah. Going that into, was just going so into high. Double Masters. This was it an was $80? 80, $80. $80 card. Oh $80 Lord. to get a Phyrexian Altar and it is now around 25 bucks, um, which is... Uh, and the you art on the the cool art in that one is awesome. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, we, we should mention Vidal Knorri was a twenty seven dollar card. I was just about to mention going it, into yeah. wow. reprints. I'm sorry to step on you. How much is it now? Five dollars. Yeah, you yeah. can get one for every so deck. Just stop like, come on down. I would expect it to stay pretty low too because mm-hmm. the yeah. format sped up. It's 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 never been great. I just like it a lot, and mm-hmm. it's definitely sort of you know harder to play than it used to be. Oh, yeah. So I would expect that price to kind of stay a little bit lower and not settle as high as it was before. Whereas something like Teferi's Protection, I would expect to crawl back up. And if they don't reprint it again, even surpass where it was uh, before. So, Mm -hmm. you know, that's how I would look at the prices on cards right now from Double Masters and some of the stuff we're going to uh, talk about, which is the stuff that you know goes in every deck if it's cheap now, it's pro- it's not likely to be this cheap for a while. Mm. It might be a good time to pick up Teferi's Protection and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, we, you should talk about the Commander product reprints. There were not many to speak of um, this year that, that really made a dent. Uh, the biggest one is Shizo Death's Storehouse was 35 39 going into uh, <laughs> the announcement, and it has dropped all the way to eight seventy nine. It's the 75% Sounds about de- right. decrease. I wouldn't expect that to crawl back up either because that was lack of no, supply. No, that was yeah. a lack of yeah. supply situation. But Jessica's Will, this is where it was reprinted. It was mm-hmm. 17 bucks is 11 now. It That card it's is going not, back up. It's going to go back up. It's going back 100%. up. So if you, if you need more get them right now uh one and that you know i thought where to was go to. really funny was skull clamp skull clamp <laughs> it was printed yep. in the baldur's gate pre-con the 40k pre-con and the brothers for pre-con wow, wow they want people to have skull clamp. <laughs> they, it was 11 dollars and 28 cents before the baldur's gate pre-con and it is around 470 now uh so they printed it three times in three pre-cons and it is still almost five bucks so get it right now because this price does climb back up to ten dollars yeah it's so good it's so, so good. many decks want it and yeah. when it's in your deck it's often the best card in your deck mm-hmm. uh yeah. we mentioned these before but there were these retro artifacts in the brothers war and included in them uh, with the serialized ones too they just had just regular retro artifacts that were reprints mm-hmm. so there was a couple of top reprints here the big one was thorn of amethyst oh, wild was 27 dollars and now is a buck yeah. It was $27? Uh, Legacy. Holy cow. Uh, Holy Thorn cow. Thorn of Amethyst is, is often a sideboard card in Legacy. Yeah. Staples against I just against, didn't think there was enough Storm. Legacy players for that to make any difference. Well, there was on only the one yeah. printing of it. Yeah. yeah. So um, this is this That's why definitely it immediately goes to $1. Yeah. yeah it, <laughs> but, this is a supply and demand situation. So now if you want to stick a Thorn of Amethyst in your commander decks, you know, go please, nuts. Please uh, don't. It's, yeah. a, it's a dollar. I literally yeah. mentioned it in our last uh, set review. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. I'd rather you don't play it. Yeah. Um, but it's not, you know, you <laughs> get you killed but there are also some powerful cards here though mox yeah. amber ashland Dalter, unwinding clock are all pretty pretty great cards in commander huge ones yeah unwinding yeah. clock going from 1650 all the way down to 259 is a huge yeah, plummet 80%. and really exciting I to love see that card. yeah um finally we have the standard sets where cards are reprinted from so these are just from cards from this so we've done commander the brothers war retro artifacts now we have standard sets mm-hmm. well what's what's nice i just want to say before we get into standard sets is oh, yeah? the, last year there were not very many reprints in the standard sets, I recall. There was one to speak of, and it was Thalia. And so it was right. nice for them to be like, hey, wait, standard sets are still a place we can put reprints, and the list is a lot longer this year, which I think is good. Yeah. Yeah, the big one of the year, of course, was Liliana of the Veil, went from 56.40 all the way down to 21.22. Not as good 62%. in modern anymore, either. Not so. as good in modern anymore, and there's a little bit more supply and some new art that yep. you can pick up for that. Yep. Diabolic Intent, a great tutor. Fauna Shaman, also a great tutor. That was a huge one from 11 bucks mm-hmm. to one buck yeah Ooh, let's you can go get a full art foil fauna shaman right now for about three bucks wow Pretty i recommend nice. getting it for your draft deck yeah oh man i drafted it bro and i so got good. a worm coil engine with it. <laughs> Gross! <laughs> Gross. That was the best time I've ever had drafting <laughs> Brothers War. Oh, and the pain lands. I love these lands. They chat mm-hmm. for colorless as well as a color, uh, I think, in the enemy colors. No, actually, all the color pairs. Yep. Um, so all of them had like a 70%-ish decrease, except for the ones that were already out there from other pre-cons. Like Yavamaya yep. Coast have been reprinted a bunch of times. A ton of times, yeah. The big ones were Sulfurous Springs and Attercar Wastes. Wastes. We're all both above $10 and are now uh, th- 2 and $3. At, that's the right price point for those lands. I agree. I would like to see the pain lands uh, stay on the cheaper end of things. 
Thanks. Yeah. So yeah, from the cards we asked for, a pretty good, pretty good amount of them got pre-printed. I'm still hoping for that Sword of Feast and Famine, though. Give me another one. Yeah. Um, let's talk about it. So there are still some very badly needed reprints in 2023. A lot of those cards are still around 40 bucks. Um, and I would love to see them get closer to the $20. We need a double masters 2023, please. Yes, please. Uh, Cyclonic Rift is 35, $36. Wow. Still. <sighs> Ristic <card> Study is, <laughs> is 34 Lotus Petal. Oh. Lotus Petal. A treasure token is $21 (laughs) to buy (laughs) a recurrable treasure token. I love that, though. That's true. Demonic Tutor, all the way back up to 35 bucks. Yep, even after the reprint in Strixhaven. How about the best land ever? Ancient Tomb, 65. We need them to reprint Ancient Tomb for sure. Please, please a reprint on Ancient Tomb. So that I can kill myself faster with it. A similar similar land, I would love to see Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth back down to 10 bucks where it was for a little while. It's all the way back up to $34. It was in a a summer 2021 set or something, Yeah, it was at Ultimate Masters. Yeah. It was in and it came to... It It was was also in in Time Spiral. Remastered. Yeah. Remastered, yeah, was where it was printed last. I think it was uh, in the standard set too. I think it was in like the yearly no. magic set. Oh, whatever. I'll I look it up later. So. Let standard? me check while we continue to talk. Do you mean a core set? Yeah, I think it was a core set. Maybe years ago. Yeah, I don't know. It could have been before me. Either uh, way, it's 34 down. We need it to reprint it again. Yeah, please. please. Yeah. Uh, finale of Devastation is a whopping $40. It's a uh, 39 dollars Sorry, it was from Magic 2015. I'm <laughs> yeah, it was a standard yeah, core set. It was a core set. You're right. It was we got just excited a long time back ago. then too. Is that the one with yeah. Renown? I yeah, I think so. Yeah, I love those <laughs> creatures. Uh, okay. Fierce Guardianship is a whopping sixty-four dollars, please. Yikes. Deflecting uh, SWAT fifty-four dollars. How about this jewel though? This a hundred and five for just the regular. Maybe one. they don't need to. Mm, eh, should yeah. they? Do we need more? They could hold out. Maybe not. <laughs> one I would love to see reprinted is Nick Those Shrine to Nick's. It's a twenty-eight sixty-two. I'd love like to that should bring be that higher. down. That is a card is so good. It is. Yeah, so you know good. why it's yeah. not higher? Is because people don't play monocolor decks. But it's still good in a dual color deck, depending. Yeah. There's often decks that you're like 70 30, mm-hmm. then I'd play Nykthos. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Because it really only has to tap for like four till it's good. Like, mm-hmm. till yeah. it's very good. Yeah. It's better than Cabal Coffer is in a lot of decks. Yeah. That's yeah, for sure. It's quite strong. And it matters for your permanents, too. Like, my yeah. Shadowborn Apostles deck is two colors, but it runs Nykthos because most of my permanents are black, black, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Absolutely. yeah. Oh, these next ones Great Henge, 60 bucks, pretty wow. much. And yeah. Meat Hook Massacre, $45. Even after it was banned in standard. Ugh. I or wish I picked up more Meat Hook Massacres. It's my kind of card. <laughs> we don't care about either of those I'm sorry. I don't know. I, I don't play either. It was banned, and the price didn't go down far enough. Uh, the medallions still need a, a reprint. We would love to yeah, see so those. And the last three are connected. It's Anointed Procession Parallel Lives in Doubling Season, please. Anointed Procession is 32.42. Parallel Lives is forty-five ninety-one. Jeez. Doubling Season's already back up to $85. $85. It's it was not even in what, like Battle Bond or something? I guess it is that it was good, in but Double Masters. The, the first original? one. The first one. Yeah. And it was in Battle Bond. It was so. in Battle Bond yeah, too, that too. Yeah. So it got reprinted like back to back years and yeah. it's already and back it's up already to back to, oh up to eighty five dollars. Uh to be for for what it's worth, I don't think double ma- uh doubling, doubling season seasons. is eighty five dollars of oh, a card. I don't I, think so. I'm sorry, yeah. I, I think don't it's think it's very slow. good. If Super Friends, sure, but in <laughs> yeah. a token deck, you don't run it. Uh, yeah. I just cut it from a token deck. Yeah. Yikes. You yeah. want your parallel lives. Yeah. I want I want that effect for cheaper. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because you're not trying to ultra planeswalker. All right, well, well, please, Wizards, reprint some of those cards. I think if the hit rate is similar, it seemed like about 60% or so to what we asked for last year. Yep. And by the way, they can't re- react to what we've asked for because all of next year has already been signed off yeah. and it's being printed. So we, we do know. not affect reprints. Yeah, These are hopes and prayers. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now well, let's talk about, I like this one. I can't believe it. We haven't had a single commander ban or unban for 14 months yes the there last, were no changes to the nothing. format this year no rules changes but 3,000 more legendary creatures were added in Innistrad <laughs> double feature <laughs> to specifically double feature <laughs> you'd think that set would be more popular yeah, it's all I the know. legends in it they're just chilling <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the last time it happened was September 13th, 2021. Golos was banned and Worldfire was unbanned. So, yeah. For the yeah, bans, 14 at least. Months. 14 months since then. Wow. I pulled some dates because I was like, okay, how long is 14 months in between? Yeah, how abnormal is changes? that? It feels yeah. abnormally long. About it feels 14, quite yeah. long. And I think that's because the last two rule changes that we had were very close together. Right. Uh, Golos ban- was banned and Worldfire was unbanned only two months after Hullbreacher was banned. And then the there was a rule change for Dungeons. 
Uh, but in between the whole breacher ban and the the other major rule change, that was 11 months. Right. And that was when we banned, like all formats banned the culturally insens- insensitive cards. Right. And then there was the commander dies update yeah. was the, was like the significant Invoke change prejudice. there. Um, and then it was Lutri and Flash <laughs> before that, which was like nine months. Nine months. And then Iona Paradox Engine and Painter Servant. This was a... I think I did my math wrong. Yeah, I was going to say it says 27 like, months. 27 months is certainly yeah. not yeah, right. It was uh, closer to 10 months. It was, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. No. It's, it's July more, to it's, April. July yeah. to April. Yeah. About 10 months. Yeah, about yeah. 10 months. Uh, between... <laughs> 27 yeah. months. Excuse me, guys. Uh, so for so that, yeah. but basically we're looking at a normal range of somewhere around 10 months 10, between yeah. changes. It looks like, yeah. I mean, just ballparking it. Yeah. So we are in sort of a longer period and mm-hmm. we know they're not banning anything at least until all will be one in February. Yeah. So we're going to make it to 16 or so months. It's going to be, it's a long time. I mean, and I, that sort of bodes an interesting question is, do we think Commander's in a healthy place? Like, we haven't had any changes in 16 months. Does that mean 14. that we're ju- 14, 14 months, yeah. excuse me? 27 that, months. 27 months. <laughs> two plus two is 27. A double feature. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think we are in a pretty healthy place in terms of just we've been growing so much it's hard to even check in almost at, at this point because we're being inundated by multiple areas that are going to affect the format i don't know still how ultimately all these new cards are going to play out but i think the game itself is pretty healthy and it seems like post pandemic people are finally getting back out into play groups and stuff and playing magic away from the influence of a central source of like the internet and social media mm-hmm. so that could be i think a net good for what's happening too yeah i mean it, it's an interesting question is like are we is are no changes happening because everything's good and we're just cruising or are no changes happening because we're having trouble dealing with the amount of changes that have come to commander in the last 14 months because the last 14 months is like you know it's 400 new commanders and 2000 yeah. new cards and that's not even including the 200 new commanders the year before that were included in that so it's really hard to judge um it like are we just it also could be related to the pandemic where like not a lot of player people were playing at in game stores or playing in events where it's hard to get your finger on the pulse of the community right now yeah we finally had our first command fest back right Mm -hmm. and then we had the magic event in vegas again and it looks like they're gonna be even more so i think i'd be able to better answer this question after seeing what the status is of the player base from all those yeah yeah, but I would say like we've the pandemic's been going on for a while. Yeah, I know. So yeah. it's not like a new thing. So that paradigm hasn't shifted. We banned cards in the middle of it mm. along the way. Yeah. And you know, a large indicator of bans and unbans and what's going on with the format is just sort of general chatter mm. online, Twitter, Reddit, those types of things mm-hmm. which, you know, all of us monitor and i know a lot of people out there do or don't i would i would suggest don't but (laughs) (laughs) you know those are usually like canary in the coal mine type of things for like what might be problem areas Mm. and you know if you measure those things right now anecdotally it feels like it's pretty healthy it feels like there's not there's definitely not any big pillars that everyone's coalescing around at the moment yeah for sure that yeah feel like real problems not that there aren't any sort of with the minimally yeah. problematic things yeah I'd, we're talking about commander bans and unbans so i'm assuming we're talking about like the rules committee and what they could affect rather than wizards yeah. and design which is what we talked yeah. about when we're talking about amount of product and things mm-hmm. like that for sure yes and saying things like you know they've been designing narrow commanders and things like that which i think is good mm-hmm. yeah so from the rules committee perspective i understand why they haven't made any moves it seems correct to me and yeah. like let me pose the question this way are there any changes that either of you would suggest or want to make at this point? I mean, the the only thing that has a question mark for me, and it does still have a question mark, there's no period on this at all, is, is Dockside. Uh, oh, is yeah. is the unresolved question, um, is what's going to happen with Dockside. No, Dockside has resolved, and you're losing. I'm, I'm, what? And I'm I'm someone, no, for someone else. They sacrificed oh, oh, it. Oh, yeah. Do- they yeah. sacrificed it and then reanimated it. If, yeah, if yeah. Dockside resolved. And then bounced it with Team oh, Saber Tooth. Oh, uh, is yeah. there a moment that I can interact? No. Or? Sorry. No. 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 <laughs> I just <laughs> get the mana. Yeah, Ashton's Altar is a mana source. Oh, so I can't. I see. There is definitely a big question mark over what to do with Dockside, and I do think it has 
has similar problems to stuff on the ban list, but I don't think there's been enough of a movement or enough of a decision even from the community about Dockside to, to sure make, would to feel pull. bad to ban it right after it got reprinted. Ooh, yeah, yeah, right. Ooh. How about you, Jimmy? It, like, how do you like if you were in charge of the format? Is there any changes you would make right now? I mean, make red better. Just keep going. No, Another Dockside. Do. I don't think. Oh, that's two right. more. No, 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 can't do they that. unban Worldfire. That's a start. Red's getting better <laughs> by the day. No, I, I, I still don't think any of the unbans make a difference i haven't seen world fire played once ever may never see it played mm-hmm. uh so protean that, hulk did protean hulk yeah protean hulk and i think that whole flash scenario was cool mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. and i'm glad that whole breacher is gone yeah maybe maybe uh, i am uh, maybe the, the the other thief needs to get, say opposition bye bye opposition agent yeah you think I, don't so? I don't know i've seen uh, i've seen two people instantly concede as a result of that card i mean the card there. sucks to get Definitely. played against you but i don't think it's broken yeah that i mean but again if it's about the play environment yeah it know. also doesn't have this similar like the thing about whole breacher the reason that we played against it so much is because it was really fun <laughs> <laughs> if you cast whole breacher you were like whoa, whoa. <laughs> that was awesome and uh, opposition agent like when people cast it they kind of know it's a bummer and that keeps it out of a lot of the tables that the yeah, yeah. committee is focused on i think that that makes a lot so, of sense too yeah. and, and you also don't right you have so many player bases that are playing this game and you're going to yeah. anger so many people if you dock side ban and you're going to make people happy at the same time so sometimes it's just best to let the play groups themselves sort it yeah. out and if pe- players are able to do that then i think we're in a very healthy place I think we're in a healthy enough place in Commander where we can experiment with some unbans. Um, I do think that there are cards that are safe to to introduce into the water a little bit and see how they yeah um, see how they fare, see what the reactions are. Profit of Krufix, um, maybe it's yeah. Time. Let's get it back. No, let's go. Uh, absolutely. Not. There are a that bunch that guaranteed one hundred percent. There are a bunch that like you unban them, it'll have the same effect that Worldfire <laughs> had, where you yeah. don't see it. Coalition yeah. victory. Oh, they can Coalition unban it tomorrow, sure. and it will not matter mm-hmm. because it still won't get played. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. So I, I sort of agree with you, but also like. The, uh, does Coalition Victory make for a lot of really fun games either? Yeah. So, like, now that it's on there, I'm fine with it staying. Yeah. yeah but yeah. if we were in an alternate universe where it wasn't yet banned, I certainly would not think it should be banned. No. But, yeah. You yeah, know. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. yeah. But I, I agree. I think the commander is in a very healthy place. Um, and I'm glad that they've shown a lot of restraint. Obviously, Rachel and I are on yeah. the commander advisory mm-hmm. group yeah. and no, involved in that process a little bit, but we don't ultimately make any decisions. We just mm-hmm. tell them what we think and then they do what they want. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I would commend them for you know not doing much because i don't think much needs to be done right now we should mention they are doing some stuff they yeah, are, yeah. yeah. we mm-hmm. should mention yeah they have done some things and it's more in the administrative side of how yeah. the rules committee operates uh they did add uh two people to the actual rules committee this year they mm-hmm. added uh, uh two friends of ours olivia gobert hicks and uh, jim lepage from the spike feeders both have been on our channel before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you've seen Olivia a lot on Game Nights. Jim was on yeah. the Kegis episode of Extra Turns, has been on the podcast. Game Nights Live, go watch it. <laughs> yeah, and I, I like these choices. Um, I like Jim because he has you know a foot in the CEDH community, so it's nice to have them represent a little mm-hmm. more. Um, Olivia's been around for a long time and represents a different car- part of the community, obviously. Uh, mm-hmm. First woman who's been in the rules community, which I think mm-hmm. is a big deal. A little yeah. bit of diversity is good. So expanding their perspective... Um, I, I think it, it is a is a plus. Absolutely. I mean, I I think um, the rules committee is definitely looking forward. They're taking advantage of this healthy moment in Commander. I think to be like, okay, so Commander's changing really fast. What can we do to adjust our processes and to adjust the way that we think to accommodate? this changing uh the the changing commander landscape and i think getting jim and olivia in there to help navigate that and to help provide perspective uh, of younger commander players and people who you know know the format better today than it was uh before Mm -hmm. is uh is only goes a long way to helping that there's one thing we should bring up and we didn't write it down but i Mm -hmm. I do want to talk about it because it was a little bit of a controversy when olivia and jim got um Mm -hmm. oh brought it which is the the diversity aspect and uh, and i do want to say i hope the rules committee as it continues to sort of evolve and change and you know i don't know what they're going to do they could add more people they could switch out people that are currently there i I don't even know if they have rules about term limits or how length of terms or anything (laughs) like that right like i have no idea you got to be elected back yeah and i don't think they've (laughs) i don't think they decide those type of things but you know I think we can imagine that as time goes on, there's going to be some amount of change over our additions to it. And I hope they think about the diversity aspect because Mm. I do think that was a a slight disappointment. I love Jim and Olivia and Mm. I think they're great and I wouldn't like 
say that either of them shouldn't yeah. be in it. Like they both should. <laughs> yeah. But you know, when you start from the position the rules committee started from, you painted yourself into a little bit of a corner as far as diversity. Yeah. And so, yeah, you got to work a little bit to get out of that. And I think that is reasonable to ask them to do. Absolutely. Yeah. It's going to take a little bit of work for sure. Rules committee should, again, it should be representative of the player base in terms of knowing what their needs are. So that obviously plays into that aspect as well. Uh, but overall, yeah. the rules committee, and I already answered this question, but mm-hmm. to pose it to both of you, mm-hmm. you know, not how the format's doing, but how do you think the rules committee itself is? Give them a performance review. Yeah. Um, I, I think this has been a really big year for the rules committee. And I think it's the going through the process of of deciding who to integrate into the rules committee and and having these new faces means they have to really evaluate their processes, their uh, justification, their um, the way that they communicate with each other mm-hmm. and make it something that's sustainable for the format long term, especially as it grows. And, you know, as, as like people don't want to be a part of the rules committee forever. So that's like they have to recognize that commander is going to have a long life and prepare for um, what that looks like. Um long term. So I, I, I think it's been a big growing year for them. And I'm really excited to see what they've got coming up. Yeah, I think it's it's just important to have that kind of mentality, which is like, hey, this is more than just a game, right, for these people and yeah. what they're doing for the community and for the game itself. So having a growth-oriented mindset about, like, we're not going to be here forever. We're trying to figure out what the optimal way is to represent this whole thing and, and to do it right and justice mm-hmm. uh, and, of course, do it c- correctly across ev- as many of the points as you can is important because yeah. I think nothing huge has happened. We have 14 months since the last big change. Mm-hmm. It, once things start moving, as long as that foundation is set, I think we're going to see a lot more success from having an inst- sort of like a group like this mm-hmm. operating in tang- in tangent, in tangent, yeah, in with yeah. tandem, in tandem, tandem. There you go. <laughs> That's right, tangential. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that is also a word. And tangential, tandem, tandem, Joel. The bright teacher. Okay. Okay. Let's uh, move on. Yeah, it's it's been it's been a really good year, I think, for Commander. And I, I wanted to talk about some of the biggest successes of the year. What are what are the highlights of for Commander, for Magic in general, um, or of the products that we've talked about so far? Well, we don't know what wasn't a success this year. I know we'll get to it in yeah, a second. Yeah, yeah. one sec. <laughs> um, I promise it's on the list. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. But, uh, well, we have reprints down as one of the biggest successes of this year, and I think we just demonstrated that the reprint. Overall, this year we're very, mm. very good. So, got to commend Wizards of the Coast for the work they did there. And yeah. after last year, we were pretty disappointed. So, mm-hmm. I'm glad that they sort of righted this ship here. And I hope yeah. that this will be the norm going forward. Is like we yeah. have so much product coming out now. There is no excuse because there's lots of opportunity to put in reprints. Yeah. So, listen. There's a lot of cards worth a lot of money. They're always going to be able to make money off of those cards. Let's make the game feel like. People are winning because they are good at strategy and choosing which cards to put in their deck, yep. and not people are winning because they, they can afford, afford it. Afford more, right. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they finally recognize Commander is it's the product, it's the game, <laughs> it's the one that is driving magic growth, yeah. and that makes sense given we, what we've seen with the reprints. Yeah. Um, one of the greatest successes, in my opinion, this year was the adjustment of pre-release timing. Um, this year, starting with New Com- New Capenna, they moved the paper releases before the arena release. Oh, yeah, right. I forgot they did that. Yeah, that yeah. was early in the year. I mean, year. I forgot they didn't do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know what there I mean. was a moment. Ah. There was a moment where you could play the sets for the first time digitally, and after right. some feedback from the community, they have adjusted that again. So the first time you play with these cards is in paper, and is at your local game store. And yeah. um, it used to feel kind of pointless to go to the pre-release because you've like, already played with these I've cards been playing for, a this week. for like a week. And I, I've drafted this 15 times already. And if you didn't do that, you're like, I'm going to get crushed. When Yo, I go. Yeah. yeah. Because it's, these people have been playing for a week and I haven't. Yeah. Right. I've been playing draft and this is sealed. It's yeah. yeah. Um, it was a huge change. It meant a lot. Um, a, a lot to a lot of players, especially anybody yeah. who who plays limited. It, and it meant did a lot not to me. affect the streaming game at all. Not at all. Which is um, important too. Really, I, I thought it was a great change, and yeah. uh, it was. A, they tested it in New Capenna, and they decided to keep it all the way through Brothers War. Yeah, so I forgot I'm it wasn't hoping, like that. Yeah, I'm hoping that's a. Uh, it feels like it's been successful, and yeah, hopefully they'll stand pat on that now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the next bullet point we have here is pre-cons. We did a lot of set reviews and a lot of pre-con reviews and upgrades, and I will say that everyone really enjoyed upgrading the pre-cons that worked on them, and especially the Warhammer pre-cons. I would say pre-cons plus universes beyond. They showed some. This was a 
big question mark, right? If mm-hmm. Warhammer was bad, that would be kind of the death knell, I think, of, of people's faith in Universe of Beyond. But they not only did it well, they did it great. Mm-hmm. So if they can get maintain that through Lord of the Rings and the other big properties, Doctor Who, then I think we're in for a very interesting sort of like new universe of magic. Yeah, I mean, they crushed a ton of precons this year. The Brothers War precons were fun and powerful out of so the box. Powerful. Oh my gosh. Baldur's Gate was sweet. All of those decks were really, really fun to play and played well against each other. The Neon Dynasty ones were extremely re- well received. The Vehicle one is awesome, uh, which is pretty shocking. And like I said, one of my favorite products of the year this, this year was the starter decks. Yeah, yeah. They've just gotten really good at making precons. They're like, really, they've really got good it at it down now. Yeah. And they're... It kind of feels like draft environments they've gotten really good at in the last couple <laughs> right, of years. Right. So yeah, the, the design has been great. Yeah, for sure. Uh, one more thing that I loved was the Countdown Kit product. I thought that was a very fun way to celebrate 30 years of magic. Um, if you and, can get it. I probably would think yeah. that, but I didn't get it. Yeah, yeah that's so. that's a, a, a perfect transition to get into the biggest twists of the year, and which the first is, one is the Countdown <laughs> Kit. <laughs> Release. Boy, wouldn't it be great if that Not could be product. in the hands of players. Uh, yeah, the release was was really a mess and they yeah. needed, need to figure out how to do that because it seems like it's something that they're going to be doing a lot more. Especially of. because you have trained your secret lair buyers to know there's a period of time. Mm-hmm. And to all of a sudden... That's what happened with me. I saw it. I was like, that looks cool. And yeah. I was like, I'll have 30 days. So I didn't... I just compartmentalized in my yeah. brain as yeah. don't worry about it. And then everybody comes in and they're like, did you hear about the countdown thing? And the, I'm like, wait, what? Yeah. yeah. And they're like, no, you can't get it. We, we couldn't get it. You know, we were there... The minute it opened or whatever and i was yeah. like oh i just didn't realize that was the case with this thing yeah, yeah it was a, a real mess uh i hope they do the kit again though it was really fun yeah uh, i've really yeah. enjoyed opening them it's it's tough because it's like you know scoring me once uh and mm-hmm. it's kind of yeah, exactly. you know, we're in we're in interesting territory there i i really hope that they don't fumble the bag on something like this next time because yeah. it was a sweet product it was really i cool love product. your idea of like yeah, hey just, everybody we'll take as many orders as we can yeah uh, you know within this amount of time yeah and then we have this many that can go out before the date, yeah. and then them, the rest yeah. of you will still get it. You're so going to you, get it. You're just yeah. going to get it whenever you get it. Yeah. And that's... I would totally be like, sweet, I still want it. Yeah, yeah just give it to like me cool in like If March, I could order it tomorrow, February. but you know, I'm not going to get it till March, that it's a cool product. I want it. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. I'll it's even really wait a, I'd even wait a year. Until I'd next even wait year. A year. Until the coin flippy deck shows up. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the next biggest whiff of the year. Boy, what was it called? Oh, oh, it was set uh, on that, that Some cool... amount of features. I forget how many, though. Yeah, it was like triple. movies It was like multiple something. features. Yeah, yeah. On yeah. that multiple werewolf features, plane. Yeah. Ugh, Innistrad double feature was a miserable product. The cards were ugly. The draft format yeah. was weird. They, like, printed the same card twice with different symbols on it. The Blanche... Oh, that was weird because it yeah. appeared in both sets. In both sets. So they just printed... There was, like, no editing on this thing at all. Yeah. They and just... then the Dracula stuff on top of it all, too, didn't really add exactly what... Yeah. I just... Was... Yeah, Tough. I think hopefully this taught the lesson of like, listen, you have to put some amount of effort into it. You can't just yeah, yeah, literally take the black and white uh, effect, <laughs> drop it on everything, and then just print it and and <laughs> expect that to go well. Can you imagine being an artist and wizard just being like, we made it black and white print. It's fine, right? <laughs> yeah, it's fine. <laughs> It's the same. It's like at least send it back to me and give me a second. Yeah, let us play like with some plan contrast ahead. a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, black no, and white print. Yeah, it's like they ran it through a filter. Oh, that, they were the, really. Those bad. are the moments where it does feel like you know the revenue is is like really really pushing them to make bad decisions you have yeah. to release one more product in order to hit this benchmark yeah, yeah. And it's like okay yeah. guys All right, double what if feature we... and then people thought it was gonna be a curated draft format that was specific and it no. just wasn't it was just two weird draft formats yeah. smushed together yeah it was like early, it was like when they used to release three sets in the same realm yeah. or whatever it so. might yeah I, I like your point there though and I hadn't really thought about that but there probably might probably might there good chance there was some corporate benchmarks we're not aware of that yeah. somebody had either agreed to hit or bonuses were <laughs> yeah. tied to sure. they were like hey next year w- here's our benchmark we're going to release eight sets yeah. they determine those in certain ways <laughs> and they're like wait wait what do you mean what's by a set, set? <laughs> <laughs> wait, and wait, wait, in 2022 set? there's going to be 10 yeah. yeah and so this was a way that they kind of had to do it to hit those corporate benchmarks so that everybody gets their bonuses or whatever yeah. and i'm assuming it probably wasn't staffed properly all the way because it was like oh just just do this and someone had to t- burden that work and, and we see that in the yeah. movie industry and things where people will have to produce things to maintain rights to the properties and things like that so right. this is not like unknown in other areas of business so it's it's possible so maybe our vitriol 
can be tempered a little bit by just yeah. knowing like yeah this is a thing they had to do yeah. it's possible i don't know obviously we don't know that to be the case or not i'm more yeah. bemused yeah, yeah. There you no go. vitriol for me no well there'll be vitriol in a minute yeah uh, yeah just, just hold your arms uh, uh, <laughs> the delay on the 40k products absolutely made the last half of the oh, year yeah. an insane race if it had come out in august i think we all would have felt a lot better about the amount of products that came out in in 2020 too yeah yeah i agree um, and it really messed up our game night's release schedule that was a we nightmare. had actually shot the game night's episode to come out in august so we shot it in july yep. mm-hmm. and then they delayed the product so they're like okay so that's gonna have to release in october we had another halloween episode planned for october we had to quickly come up with a new theme and then to we were already two weeks shoot. behind when starting yeah. it uh, that's not their fault obviously because they didn't want this to happen either this is yeah. just a yeah. pandemic related yeah. international manufacturing and mm-hmm. shipping problem but yeah that is a definitely i don't really know if that's a whiff i mean it's a disappointment but it it's tough, not yeah. somebody's fault no i yeah. know it's not that's what i mean it's a whiff it's Hold not on. like they trap. Someone has to be at fault down the production yeah, line. Yeah, Gavin. Somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Gavin, why couldn't you? Why couldn't your home laser jet printer create enough Gavin, cards? You travel everywhere. Why did you travel to the factory where these were being yeah, made fix and it. get the whip out? Yeah, jeez, yeah, man. Geez, uh, that's how it works. Here's a big whiff. Uh, we didn't hear a thing about the Magic Netflix series. Badum. Whoosh. Uh, I was a part of announcing it at the big celebration the year prior. Yeah. And it's sort of gotten wrapped up in production hell, I suppose. Yeah, I think it just got tangled up. I mean, in tw- in August of 2021, they released a bunch of 3D models of Gideon and they're like, I promise we're working on it. And they announced a release date of 2022. And uh, then it fell off the back of a truck somewhere. Um, and they didn't mention it in their uh, Netflix Geeked Week in 2022. So oh, right. it's we really don't know what's going on with that show when or if it will come out and, I know we, uh, but we know though I think I mean just being in this town and being around this type of business when it got announced what let's circa 2017 2018 2019 or, yeah. is when it was announced I think uh, yeah something yeah. else hadn't existed at that point June people were all excited and I was like listen at, at the point of announcement there is less than a 50% chance that it ever comes out that yes. is how this happens if you read the trade mm-hmm. you know papers Variety Hollywood Reporter whatever they're announcing stuff constantly and that is not an indication that the thing is real or ever going to happen. Yeah. And the problem is that magic players aren't in Hollywood and don't understand how that really works. Yeah. And what we've seen is just very typical of the way these things go, where the Russo brothers were involved for a while. They dropped out. Mm-hmm. They brought in new people. They had a release date set. It's changed multiple times. We can only assume that some people have looked at rough cuts and things and yeah. it's not working or it's changing or there's arguments between the creatives and the and the uh, Wizards people or whatever. And yeah. so, like, who knows? But I just wouldn't hold my breath about it's, the, whether it's ever going to really exist. Animation is really tough yep. to fund and to build as well. It's not like you go and film it and you've got the footage and the movie's ready to go. It's like, no, we haven't drawn 20 scenes. We don't have base animation for this and that. Wish Dragon used to be a DreamWorks movie and mm-hmm. then it moved and it got bought up by Sony Pictures Animation and then they were paired up with a Chinese studio that also changed hands, right? All of these things had to happen with lots of tense moments where the director was like, I don't know if this movie I've been working on for three years is going to get made. It's literally like the coin was in the air twirling for Wish Dragon yeah. the whole time and there's alternate universes where it never get made, right? Like yeah. that's how oh, yeah. 100%. the edge of a knife whether it ever happens. Yeah. 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 So I don't think that anybody should be really surprised by this. I mean, you know another thing that probably hurt them a lot and it, it's ironic you wouldn't think like it would but Arcane probably hurt Arcane him a lot. Arcane was so uh, successful. They're percent. like, make three more seasons of that. Well, and now they have to compare themselves, or not even have to. They probably just are comparing themselves to Arcane, which is an unrealistic bar to try and like that. That shows insane. In and the, yeah. one of the thousand chance that it was that good. Yeah. If you haven't watched Arcane, I don't like. If you yeah. don't, it's amazing. It's but not like a you don't want that existing wise. in yeah. a world yeah. where you're trying to make your game into an animated thing because you're like, how can we ever be as good yeah. as that? And everything we do in the back of our heads, we're like, yeah, but Arcane. Yeah. And so like that could just make you aim for a target that is not hittable in mm-hmm. which case it could just, be like you, recycle you, do something else reshuffle yeah. figure it out that's production that's how movies development development just, back yeah, to development pain, yeah but yeah so i hope it exists someday but it doesn't surprise me that's not we yeah. haven't seen it yet and yep. maybe you know it was also in, on, in the better up version, ver, uh, version of this it's like hey they want like, we want to make the best thing we can this isn't going to stack up to arcane let's do something that will and yeah hopefully maybe. that's the that's the path we're going to see here we'll see i mean arcane took six years to come to fruition but i will say many things the length of time it spends does not indicate how good it will be at the end there are many many things yeah it yeah. sat in development hell for multiple decades and eventually came out and were still not good so yeah yeah, yeah. And, it, it can help you but it doesn't always and by yeah. the way you're going to see the repercussions of arcane and movies like spider-verse 
continue in the animation world for decades to come. Yeah. Those yeah. movies set bars that everyone is now like, let's do more of that and less of whatever it was we were doing before. Ugh, they're amazing. Um, All right, the last biggest whiff there of is, the year. There is one more big whiff. Uh, it's, uh, we're not going to talk about it quite yet. Uh, hang on, one sec. Yes. What? <laughs> One more. Okay. One more. Yeah, we got to yeah, talk yeah. about the biggest controversies of the year first, Josh. <laughs> These are different than whiffs. Yeah. Well, it ends, These are yeah, slightly different whiffs. <laughs> there will be some overlap. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> there, was some, there was some big moments in the year that affected Magic and Magic players. Uh, one of the big ones that happened this year were the c- huge acquisitions happened yeah. in the Magic space. Channel Fireball was acquired by TCG Player, which was in turn acquired by eBay. And those of you wondering why we change sponsors well there's a lot of things that happen when two companies acquire each other and they just becomes like okay well we need to figure out something yeah we haven't really addressed it but as a result of the channel fireball acquisition and then the ebay stuff and all of that is when we kind of rethought our sponsorship and went back to card kingdom yeah and you know i hope I wish the best for TCG Player, eBay, all that Channel Fireball stuff. You yeah. used to work at Channel Fireball. I did, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and we know all those people. Um, but yeah, it's obviously like a lot of ripple Change. effects from that too because mm-hmm. there were a lot more entities, s- separate entities selling Magic cards and now we've coalesced into fewer, Yeah, which generally isn't great for the consumer um, because the more there are generally tends to drive prices down with more competition. So we'll, mm-hmm. it's yet to be seen how that's all going to sort of play out. One thing I'll say is that TCG Player and eBay are both marketplaces, so yeah. they mm-hmm. tend to already drive their prices down and affect the you know the yeah. card kingdoms and the SCGs, but definitely was like weird to wake up one day and be like, wait, what happened? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I assume it was yeah. weird for you. It was very weird. We had a weird email. I promise you that. It was like, we're what? Okay. <laughs> All right. Things um, are about to change. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely hope the best for for them. I, I love that Channel Fireball gets to maintain its... its um, its roots as a content sphere and gets to keep making content. And I hope that that's something that they yeah. uh, are able to uh, be successful at because it's, they make some of the best uh, uh, constructed and limited content out there. I love Agreed. It. I love it a lot. Uh, the next big controversy was really interesting. Bank of America did this analysis oh, yeah. on on Hasbro uh, and basically was like, nope, this is not worth as much as it should be. And Hasbro's stock had already sort of been in a downward spiral since the a beginning trend, of the year. I'd a say. trend, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not, yeah, they're not... You're not going anywhere, trust it's me. It's not spiraling out of control. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's a dip. But everyone, of course, all of a sudden became financial analysts mm. uh, at the last moment. It was crazy. Everyone got their degree <laughs> and decided that we all could start talking about this. So a lot of people were talking about this. Mm. Was Magic killing their golden goose? Is the Hasbro stock indicative of this? Is the Bank of America report actually legitimate? Or are there better ways to look at this? And it's been interesting because it's been a big year for a lot of different financial related news. There's like been like a all, all of these things are crashing. Like Amazon, Apple, all these stocks are FTX. down. Right? FTX is <laughs> insanity um, and continues to be and will continue to be. And of course, Hasbro's in all of this as well. This is a global market and Hasbro's a partaker in it. And so I think a lot of people just have sort of seen more angles of the game and the company making it than they have ever before. Yeah. Uh, we'll link the article in the show notes. And I guess the thing I would say is it's interesting because a lot of the things brought up in the article are things we've talked about already on this episode. Mm-hmm. A lot to do with is printing too much product. Mm-hmm you know, going to cause the player base, you know, to sort of disengage and some predictions in that Mm -hmm. way um, from the person who wrote the article and things like that. And actually, uh, Chris Cox and Cynthia Williams, they did a fireside chat recently. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where it was kind of two shareholders. It wasn't to like people who play Magic the Gathering. No. (laughs) But they did sort of the sidelong like address some of the things indirectly they didn't call out the article but they Mm -hmm. talked about some of the things and how they thought that a lot of the points made were basically incorrect and and analyzing the company and not being as familiar with it um which i think is also fair having read the article it sounded like a person who was eh, a little bit familiar with magic but there was a lot of points in there that where you're like i don't think that probably matters well they knew what buttons to press to (laughs) immediately ignite people to share it across every single yeah i mean they've clearly been on reddit and probably reached out and talked to certain people in the community and gotten some opinions but i don't know that the conclusions they drew were always correct or fair or made sense considering the business model but anyway regardless of that the outcome definitely was that hasbro stock took a little bit more of a dip after the article came out and there's been a downward trend on a lot of things because of the economy so yeah you know what conclusions you will but definitely one of the controversies of the year yeah yeah 
Um, another one which feels small in comparison, but <laughs> to the stock price. cards in eternal formats. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, stickers oh, yes. and legacy what? acorn stamps. Ah, uh, universes. Ah, uh. yeah. This was a weird. This was a weird uh, moment where they decided to go from the silver bordered cards, which are very clear delineations that these are not legal in eternal formats, to s- switching to this acorn stamp that says this is not legal in eternal formats, but sort yeah. of just looks like a misprint. Uh, in a lot of ways. <laughs> yeah, the uh, fact that they're still blackboarded, I still don't like that. I don't, I understand kind of why they did it because they want some of the uncards to be playable in Commander because mm-hmm. that will make Commander players more likely to buy that product. But mm-hmm. man, it was cleaner back in the old days when it was just like yeah. silver, no. Black, white, yes. yes. I mean, everything about the card, like a magic card is supposed to communicate to the player what kind of card this is. Yeah. And like the the like different magic backs communicate very clearly that this is not a playable magic card. Right. The borders said very clearly, this is the kind of card that this is. Now we're down and to the anymore. foil stamp. And I will say like, as a new player, I was trying to play silver bordered cards just in, in like commander and stuff. Yeah. And people were like, well, that's not actually, like it's not actually, it's a silver border so you can tell. And now I think that there is going to be... It raises the barrier to entry just this much uh, in a way that's confusing to new players. Which well, especially love. when you combine it in the world where what, what have we been talking about for a lot of the bulk of this episode, which is there's so much stuff now that mm. it is impossible for me to keep tabs on all of it. Yeah, I mean, so yeah. now, just trust you. Yeah, so now it's very easy for me to be like, oh, there's a card I've never seen, but there are a lot of cards I've never seen. So yeah. let me read it real quick. And if I just miss the fact that it's got an acorn or doesn't. Mm-hmm then I am, as a person who plays a ton of Commander and has talked about it for my mm-hmm. job for seven years, mm-hmm. have a pretty decent chance of not even knowing that that's not legal or is yeah. legal. Yeah. I mean, especially when you compare it next to like the Warhammer cards and yep. and all of these different versions that have different shaped and different and crazy kinds names. of... And all like the hollow foil stamp specifically is in different shapes. It's like yeah. circles or diamonds or it's all in different stuff. So you're like... Well, how am I supposed to tell what a real magic card is? If it's like, a dodecahedron, you just you can play have it. to know. Look it up on yeah. line and uh, see what see what the internet says about it. Uh, this next controversy was <sighs> very amusing when it happened. So embarrassing. Magic Thirty uh, was going to have a cosplay contest. They did have a cosplay contest. It was amazing, by the way. And they had announced the prizes for it. And this is the biggest convention I think Magic's ever thrown. And the prizes, best in show, got a two hundred dollar gift card to Joanne Fabric, and the Bajin <laughs> Hotel for an up- upcoming event. It's like you can attend an event for free (laughs) feels like what happens at a state fair at 2 p.m on its least busy day yeah they announced this prize (laughs) like like a week before a couple weeks before oh my goodness um and of course the internet went insane about it rightfully so because it's it's embarrassing yeah it's it's, so bad and we all know the hidden costs of going traveling and especially for someone that's building a costume typically for as cheap as they can because that's the cosplay world that comes from building something from nothing you know but these costumes i mean they cost like 800 dollars more in many cases well just they work on them for months and months months to get there and the ticket and then to be like (laughs) It's a, it's a fabric gift card. Thanks for coming. Is yeah. so condescending. This was amended to thousands of dollars instead. They did change it. We should yeah, say. They yeah, did. I believe it was a three thousand dollar first prize. Yes. Uh, and you still got the gift card. You still, you still got the <laughs> yeah. gift card. Yeah. They were like, we're not taking that off the table. You still get that. Yeah. Yeah. That After, sounds like an old business deal where it's like, oh yeah, Joanne has this like weird business deal with us where we have to. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. A gift card. Cool. That's what they can do. Oh. But yeah. I decided to stop working on it at that point because there's probably a lot of other things happening. I mean, this was a case where the sort of immediate outroar cha- caused them to change it, you know, fairly yeah. quickly. Yeah. So yeah, it was yeah. kind of a win for the Reddits and the Twitters of the world. And, Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. big congrats to Dark Pack Cosplay. That yeah. Ash yeah. Auction was amazing. So yeah, that Ash cool. Auction was incredibly well deserved. By the way, if you're wizards, yeah. don't you want to give whoever wins the cosplay tournament a badge and hotel at every event for like the next year? Like, and they're yeah. going Hire to them. bring the cosplay. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah, I'm just saying, like, yeah. oh, you want to go to events? Let us facilitate that. Right. Yeah, you know? totally. Well, that yeah. was part of the... Like, part that's just of the, good for you. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. That that was part of the prize for this was all... You also got the badge in the hotel for, for an one. upcoming... For one upcoming event, and it was like... It should have just been like, you, we, we will give you a badge in hotel yeah. for yeah. all for of the, the magic next year. Next Bring year. that. Welcome. Um, yeah, because yeah. they raise the level of the events. Yeah. Anyway, it uh, it was very embarrassing, and it was uh, credit to them for fixing their mistake, And uh, but whoosh. It was, it's hard to believe that uh, there was a room, 
of people somewhere or a virtual room and yeah. they were discussing like what are we going to give mm-hmm. the winners and somebody said well i have this 200 dollar gift card my aunt gave it to me for christmas last year <laughs> i haven't that? used yeah. it yet i'm uh, happy to pass stocking. it along and the <laughs> rest of the people in that room were like yeah that's yeah that's good. fine that's fine that's, but, the that's why that, my belief yeah. is Magic 30 was already a huge event and undertaking yeah. and that at some point this just fell through the cracks yeah. and it fell through the cracks multiple times. And, and a low enough level person who just didn't know any better yeah. was like, okay, was, yeah, I guess this is what we're and doing. And somebody was like, just put some prizes out. Anything that seems reasonable, yeah, let's we just have, it out there. We have to announce this because everyone else is focused on announcing this today. So if we don't put... Yeah, it's yeah. Gonna be, yeah it definitely yeah. got rushed through the door and yeah. boy, did no one catch it. Um, oh no, we caught it. No, <laughs> we got yeah. it. They got yeah, it right they got, away. Yeah, the community got caught it. Uh, yeah, and that's why it's there, I suppose. All right, there's case. one more controversy of the Should year. We it's, finally talk it's about time. It. Let's do it. Let's talk about the 30th anniversary edition product. Uh, for those who haven't heard, uh, this this was who hasn't heard a collector set of fake cards that cost a thousand dollars. Other fandoms. Yu-Gi-Oh! fandoms, Pokemon fandoms have all heard about Magic 30th Edition. That's how bad it was. If you've been living under a rock, they took beta, the the beta set. They took out a couple of cards, and then they upped the chance to get dual lands and they had soul rings rings. and some Mm -hmm. uncommon slots i think they changed the mad the back so it's not the regular magic back they redid the art in the border not legal for tournament play all that stuff they said it's not legal for tournament play so it's kind of like collector's edition from the past and they did them a new border and an old border and then they put them in booster packs so it's not like you buy it and you know you're gonna get a set or what you're gonna get you're gonna get four booster packs in a box um and the the four booster packs were a thousand dollars $250 $250 booster packs for a chance to literally open nothing. Yeah, also a chance to open, you can open in beta. Black Lotus. Some of the rares that you can open in beta are like so embarrassingly unplayable in every format too that yeah. the whiffs are so catastrophic and terrible. Yeah. You even know what the, I mean? But even the hits don't make any sense to me. Yeah. If you open a Black Lotus, which is the most famous of all magic cards you and like- it. yeah. What are you going to do with that? Do you put it in a frame on the wall? That's, I mean, that's all you can really technically do with it. You Listen, it people were pissed about this closet. product immediately. <laughs> yeah. That's the controversy. People mm-hmm. were just mad about it. They were mad for a whole bunch of reasons. The first mm-hmm. question we have written down, though, I want to ask you both. Yeah, I, yeah. Did you like the product and did you want it? Just outside of Twitter... Just like if, if you saw this product on the shelf with a price tag of thousand dollars, <laughs> just it, when you heard about it, if, yeah, you know, before was all the vitriol like, hit you, it for me it was like I'm an invested by a magic player. I'm a whale. I would play these. I would be fine playing against them in commander. Like I'm fine with gold border cards. Yeah, and this product had absolutely no appeal to me from from the very beginning. Yeah, I think if I saw it in a store, I would laugh and instantly go online and be like, "What the heck is this?" I think when I first saw it, I didn't see the internet reaction to it. I knew inherently way too expensive, but I was mm-hmm. also like, oh, interesting. They're kind of reprinting dual lands in the commander. That was my first impression. And I was like, would I want to buy a pack to try and crack one? I'd be like, no, nah, I'd probably just buy a single later. But then I wanted to look at what it looked like. And I looked at it and I was like, eh, I'd, re- I'd rather just buy a real one. That was sort of the thing that was so frustrating with for me is that like, even if like you get the four packs, you open the four, the you open like you're the trop and the bayou and you nail it. You're like, I got all my dual lands. I can play them in commander. And that's like as good as this gets. Yeah. The cards looked bad. Yeah. And they, they had some weird like cropping of art that they, sometimes they like. They cropped the art sort of like weird. Names they were, and stuff too. Yeah. It was there really was a awkward. high dissonance between like the new border and the old, like the old frames uh, or the the new frames and the old art and mm-hmm. and then so you had a 50 50 shot to get like even get the old border one which looks way better and then on top of that you're like okay i did it i like i opened the two that i liked it's a thousand dollars yeah you could buy two dual lands for a thousand dollars you could even buy like a low level motorcycle for a thousand dollars yeah like, <laughs> like uh, you might have different goals with those two purchases. yeah yeah i'm just yeah. saying think about the thousand bucks in many different contexts right that that's like that's some the craziest rent. thing to me is like you could nail it <laughs> And then you could have just you could have just spent that much money and yeah. bought those cards already. And it just doesn't make any sense after to me after the collector's edition came out way long ago and it was mm. such a different set and had all these different things and you could buy it for a different price point. And that yeah. to me was like way they, lower. They could have killed it with sales had they just priced yeah. it in the like the double masters range. I think yeah, I was as soon as I saw it, I was like that's stupid. I don't care. 
Yeah, um, no. I wasn't super mad exactly. I was just like, I don't care. Like, yeah, I don't want any of those things. And I'm mad, certainly yeah. not willing to pay $1,000. But I don't think I'd be willing to pay 50 bucks for it because I don't care. I don't want those <laughs> cards. I don't need those cards. If I want dual lands, they're either they're going to be what they're going to cost. But it's w- either way, it's way better for me to buy the singles of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let somebody else open these packs or buy, quote unquote, real ones from before. But... If I if what I want is dual lands, and I agree with you, Jimmy, I think the real if you just boiled it all the way down, <laughs> the real reason to do this is to get to sell dual lands because yeah. that is yes. the one thing out of this whole set that mm-hmm. has any utility as a game piece to yeah. anyone is the fact that like ca- commanders casual format you're not playing in tournaments with it most of the time people allow collectors editions and things like that yeah. and so if we print dual lands this is a way to sell dual lands to commander players mm-hmm. we have to sell them at a high price point because if we obliterate dual land prices dual land prices then all of our whales go away to other games and other collectibles mm. and we can't sell this to them year after year after year in the future so yeah. i agree that that was probably the real ultimate reason to do this product but i didn't care as soon as i saw it i was like whatever it doesn't matter there's no reason for me to ever crack one of those packs if they were cheap enough i think it would have been fun to maybe draft it yeah right. oh, i know and everybody goes that. cool yeah. you know the Brian Kibler's of the world out there because he said this to me are yeah. being like, well, beta is a horrible set to draft, but I don't care. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> I never got to do that. Yeah. And so just the experience of doing it would be worth maybe $20 a pack to me or something yeah, like that. Right. The novelty to be able to do it, to draft it would have been nice. But when mm-hmm. you price it at $250 a piece, it's laughably stupid to be able to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it just feels bad. Yeah. Also, yeah. the collation doesn't make any sense. You'd have all these lands that you yeah. couldn't like. Whatever. Couldn't, that happened though, back in the day. Yeah. 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 You, you do That's it just true. for the novelty of having sure, done yeah. it and you figure out that, yes, if you get a pestilence, you're just going to win or whatever. Yeah. Fine. But that, that could be a fun experience with your friends one night yeah. at a lower price point. That's the only thing that I think would have mm-hmm. made sense but then of course they couldn't do that because you obliterate the prices on yeah. you know dual lands and maybe like power yeah. nine because power nine from the old gold bordered collector's edition stuff or, or the square borders one yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they've creeped up there i mean i've had post malone show me his gold bordered black lotus like mm. he, even like that Chris rush too I yeah think. even that stuff is hard to fi- hard enough to find that it yeah. has value so hey listen maybe that black lotus you put on the wall will eventually be worth something more power to you if you open the products yeah but i thought it was dumb but i also think like the biggest worst part about this is just what they named it and how they sold it mm-hmm. there was a way for this product to come out and i think people are mostly fine with it mostly have the reaction that i had which is mm-hmm. who cares yeah and, if know. it did not have 30th anniversary tag to yeah it. yeah because what you did is you said hey this is something to celebrate a thing that you enjoy and it goes along with what we talked about earlier about that deep connection versus that shallow connection do you get a tattoo of a yeah. thing mm-hmm. on the wall and they there's this phrase that they've been saying for years now which is some, not everything's for everybody. Yeah. This product's not for you. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I don't know if they've said that. That's a thing we hear, though, sure. mm-hmm. uh, yeah. to be fair. But here's the problem. If you say that all the time, if you're saying that for things, because you choose what is for who. Yeah. If you're saying this is not for you to me a lot, mm-hmm. then magic's not for me. Mm-hmm. Right. It's not like... Like expensive things for the most part in the real world, not always, but a lot of expensive things have some sort of tie to the cost of goods and services. Mm -hmm. So like private jet. We don't have private jets. No. Right? Why? Yet. Yeah. Why don't we have (laughs) private jets? Well, because it's very expensive and it's known, right? You Practical. Have to have, yeah, you yeah. have to have all kinds of parts and pieces and technology and people to maintain a it pilot, and place to house it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So no, we're not walking around being like it is just it messed up that I don't have a private jet because <laughs> yeah. there's a tie to the real world cost of right. what yeah. that is yeah. to yeah. obtain. But yeah. you know, even like high, like really expensive steaks and stuff are usually dry aged over sixty five days and they're yeah. cut from whatever. And there's a reason why it costs more money. Yeah, this product doesn't cost any more money to create and a, the and a 10 year old knows it mm-hmm. than a booster pack of neon dynasty yeah. yeah so i think they could have easily solved this name it something different and just put like a gold foil stamp and say oh that stamp is actual gold right it's 24 carat 24 yeah. carat stamp in the corner mm-hmm. and just tie it to some real world resource that makes it more expensive and now it's a thousand dollars and everybody's like cool i don't care about gold foil stamps but i'm not mad because you, you put some gold on there you had a whatever, resource or whatever yeah. yeah so so i think there's a yeah. lot of ways to fix it i think they just screwed up in the in, in, in how they rolled it out also yeah. it's not fair to look at look at magic players and be like it's been 30 years it's been 30 amazing years <laughs> we're gonna celebrate 
30 years of your support and your engagement and your love of this game. Yeah. Yeah. By Absolutely. charging you a thousand dollars for a weird product that like isn't for you, yeah. because that's saying there's been thirty years of magic that we have tricked you into giving you our, our money. Yeah, it was a that's weird. Like, that's what it was. It was a celebration of how expensive magic is. Is what it felt yeah. like. I, I guess it feels even worse because everything was wrong with the timing, the naming. After a full year of the most cards we've ever seen, their cherry on top was this, and it was not intended to be their cherry on top. Magic Thirty, the convention was maybe. But as a result of, I think, and I think the designers have said this publicly, they didn't even know about the product coming out until very close to its release. So this was something that was pushed through from different levels in the Mm -hmm. company itself. Now, I'm not giving them a pass for it, obviously. It was a monumentally bad decision to make this product. And I think they Mm -hmm. all recognize that more so than the $200 Joanne's gift card. (laughs) Because there's not even a single employee at Hasbro or any game company even in the world that probably has not now heard about this disaster. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're, we shouldn't get into speculating, but if you look into it, it's really odd what happened with when they even sold it and how they sort of cut off the oh, sale right, the of it sale all of a sudden. Event, yeah. We don't know any details about what happened, but it seems like it's possible that yeah. they just decided like, okay, let's just stop the sale and bail out on this product, even though there's probably more of it sitting somewhere. In a and they, secret warehouse. Because they didn't say the, the words, cards. it's sold out. They yeah, might be the giving... The sale more. has concluded, I believe yeah. is the word. They might be... They might not be able to say sold out because it might have always been their intention to hold some aside to give away at future Magic mm-hmm. Cons because we know at Magic 30, if you got the Black Lotus Pass, you got some for free. Yeah, yeah. Imagine if you go to... LGSs, I think I'll get one as well. Imagine if you all go to Magic Con Philly, you get the Black Lotus and you mm-hmm. don't get the packs, you're going to be mad because they got it at Magic 30. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So maybe they had to hold some aside. Who I don't knows? know. But anyway, yeah, there was a lot of weird stuff going on with it, a lot of weird decisions. And I, it probably I mean, has to go somewhere and something has to be done with it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. They know it's a whiff at this point and I think everybody yeah. out there, but yeah. 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 It, it was mm, definitely the biggest controversy of the year and probably Will the be biggest controversy ever. since we've been doing this podcast. Would you agree, Jimmy? Yeah, probably. And people are like, why aren't you talking about it, Jimmy? Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, one, I have a child. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and two, complaining on Twitter, even though I still do it every day, it's like pissing in the wind. You're going to get mm. pee on yourself and everyone around you. So why are you doing it? It's... To just spread more of that into the world? I don't know. I don't know. It was an incredible miscalculation. and Many things are um, a mistake in this world. Social media and Magic 30th can both yeah. be mistakes. <laughs> the craziest thing about it to me is it's a bad product and it costs $1,000. Yeah. That's cartoonish. And the cards don't even look that great. Really. Like it's just, it wasn't designed super well and then it was also crazy. Expensive. And as a result of it being just such a highlight cherry on top at the end of the year, people use that as the lens to view all of Magic, which then toxicifies the entire pool and it makes it a worse environment overall for Magic players. So yeah. I think that is my takeaways like I don't Mm. want this single product to have such a shadow effect on what is otherwise an amazing game yeah Yeah, that's actually a really good point because you you alluded to it Jimmy but there was other creators in other spaces because what they did for the marketing is they went (laughs) out to some Yu-Gi-Oh people some Pokemon people and outside of the magic sphere to have them like open the product and then hopefully, you know, help them promote it on their mm-hmm. YouTube channels or whatever. And there's stories about the Yu-Gi-Oh guy who, like, had to take down the video because Put when... Apology out. Because so many people were sort of complaining and being negative in the comments. And mm-hmm. he didn't realize even what the product was he was opening. Right. And he put an apology video out. Philip DeFranco did a whole thing about... Yeah, had the prof on and everything. And so, yeah, that does suck. It sucks when, like, what bleeds out of our careful confines of our community is this really negative thing. Yeah. That's just, like, kind of... It allows everything to get painted or look like... You know, it's this weird community that's willing to pay thousand dollars for cardboard, and the company <laughs> seems really yeah. greedy. And like that sucks if that's what like my grandparents know about. Yeah, you know, magic. I that's read what my about aunt, this. It yeah. caused the Hasbro stock to drop. Yeah, yeah. It, I had a cousin it's... that was like, "What is this with the thing?" Like they. Yeah, I had multiple friends outside of magic being like, "What's going on?" They never asked me about anything, and that's the thing that sucks. Like it sucks. That, yeah. that sucks. Yeah, it yeah. Sucks. Magic is ex- literally what the existence of people that play it and love it paint it. Yeah, mm-hmm. we've had a series of like three months where people are just throwing paint black paint on it yeah um okay well in the after that discussion i i and we've talked about this a little bit but there has been a lot of really high rarity really high price stuff coming out recently and it makes me like there was a high price points for double masters was 255 dollars for a draft box the collector box was $228, and that was for only four packs. 40K as well. Four packs. The, yeah, the 40K collector's edition started out at $115, but we're like... 200 the, now. Yeah, 200 each. And then, of course, the the 30th anniversary edition was $1,000. It, it makes it look like 
magic may be getting more exclusive. Well, there's more like high pretty prizes to get. Right. Difficult things to attain. They've the exclusiveness. Added, they've added this like tier of rarity that goes beyond uh, rare and mythic, right? It's it's this this sort of white super whale, rare. Yeah. super rare cards. Yeah. And like we saw that with the, the Neon Ink Hidetsugu that came out in Neon Dynasty. Uh, yeah, the, the, yeah. Which one is it? The red one? The, is red, the red one. one. Yeah. And it's $1,500 still. It's, or, that's uh, just a price point that's been set, by the way. It doesn't You have to look at volume traded to actually understand if that price is real or not. Yeah. Quick, here's a question. Yeah. I didn't have to black out anything yeah. on this piece yeah. of paper. What does that Hidetsugu do? Oh, man. Actually, I know it's black red and it has an attached ability for red two and tap to exile the top. But it's so like, you look at the top and then whatever the CMC is, then you shoot something. And I, I think there's something else. <laughs> it's like a two, three or three. I'd have two. to take your word for it because I have no idea. But it's something it, it just shows. <laughs> we're gonna put it on screen, but I really don't notice. Fifteen hundred dollars. But it just shows that that price tag has nothing to do with utility. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. all about rarity. And yeah. this is effectively, I think, I'm mostly fine with it because it's like a, a reskin. It's not like yeah. there isn't a version of the card that, that's yeah, available at a low price point. Right, there's right, like a yeah. there's like a fifty cent version of the card you can get and play if you want to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I but mean, I, I agree with you. This is a new thing we've seen, and this included the the serialized artifacts, the serialized stuff that just came out, even the, the uh, shattered glass transformers. Yep. All of these are in the, the multiple legends, hundreds to yeah. kicking out a thousand dollar price tags for some of it, mm. and even super opening, rare secret lair stuff too. They're occasionally throwing those like the yeah. Mister and stuff. I mean, and the, like the the legends cards that they put in DMU where it's like there's one in every four collector packs and right. you could open these you know tabernacle. mythical ta the tabernacle. Tabernacle. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean <laughs> still crazy. insane to think about crazy that that happens but you're right that is more thousand dollar bills that are possible to be found mm -hmm. in uh, magic packs and We've seen them play with this over the years with masterpieces and expeditions mm -hmm. and things like that, but yep. it yep. seems like they're yeah, testing it. This year they've honed in on like a, a pretty good way to do it. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. In my estimation, do you guys agree that this is uh, you know this is not this is not Magic Thirtieth Edition. This is no, a different not. thing that's uh, for collectors, but not hurting players in any way and not right. really making players mad. Yeah, no. they have to figure out how to carve that space out, and as a result, it does reduce the overall prices of cards in the set. Still, you'll still have chase rares and things that are just like you know the freaking. Um, hook massacre and stuff that yeah. would just explode but this should technically make it easier to get other cards yeah i i am love these honestly because it feels like it, it you're you're still opening packs to for like a little bit of adrenaline and you can open yeah. this thing that you're like whoa this thing yeah you can't hit the jackpot yeah and yeah. you're just paying you know 15 bucks for a pack or whatever four bucks for a pack for for these so it is like a fun chase and it does offer something like an additional level to way uh, to engage with magic which is these this collector level i think the only way magic is actually getting more exclusive is if because of the fan base <laughs> being just like this is how to feel about this this is this right because magic 30 did not change the exclusivity of magic but everyone thinks it does it does oh, right product, the 30 edition yeah. does not affect anything if you think about it, about yeah. the actual player race except for their sentiment towards the game and that is what's making the game more exclusive is mm -hmm. it was that, that yeah I've, heard, I've seen a lot of people online make a really good point which is that the 30th edition product is fine because it's very easy to disconnect and not it just ignore it. Whereas mm -hmm. something like Modern Horizons 2, right. mm -hmm. if you play Modern, it's actually impossible for you to ignore. That's yeah. a product that, like, I don't care what you're doing, it will affect you. Yeah. yeah. And and similarly, any product they release for Commander, if they create a new Soul Ring powerful card, mm -hmm. Smothering Tithe comes out, whether you play it or not, you're probably going to face it against the table. You have to adjust for it. It, it mm -hmm. will affect you. Yeah. 30th edition product, if you want it to completely disengage and not pay attention to it, nothing will change for you. Yeah. Nothing happened. You are not forced into any new behavior or anything at all. Um, so in that respect, I agree that like, yeah. And, and same with uh, neon ink or yeah. serialized cards. These don't affect, they're not mechanically unique. They don't force you to change what's happening in games or how you're mm -hmm. going to adjust or play to it. So Yeah, it'd be and one thing if it was like, this is the, now the best card in Pioneer or Standard and you can only get it as a weird, crazy, yeah. custom whatever. It's not. And that's not the case. Like, in fact, we've seen the opposite with the reprints this year. You can see that them reprinting all of this stuff in really fancy ways will drive down the price of the, the regular of, versions. of game yeah. pieces that you yeah. can just play your game with. And, um, I think that's great. I think it's cool that there's other new ways to engage with magic and um, anything that makes the game more accessible if you're not worried about dressing stuff up, you know? It it feels like you get to play, like when you're playing a mobile game and you get to play like before the, uh, so you start investing money in it, kind yeah, of. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're getting to that point <laughs> where, where like it's right. a little bit more free to participate in magic. Be 
So I think I think some of the greatest successes of the year outweigh some of the negatives. We've been talking about the 30th anniversary product a lot, and so is the community. And the, <laughs> but it just the, doesn't matter. But yeah. that's the thing. It like just, the successes that we talked about sentiment. are reprints. We're talking about precons and card design, and like we think that on trend, the commanders are getting better and less yeah. like and less Opening intrusive. More options, yeah, and that they're building niche things for specific people, and like those are all huge growth steps. The fact that precons are like on app, like more precons were on this list than were not on this list. The fact that they're nailing those is such a great thing for us as players. Yeah, and we got hung up on on the 30th anniversary. Imagine, so. yeah, three years of growth, but every single time they release a precon, it's got just something that's so busted that messes the format that we have to ban it. Right, like 14 months without a ban and all these new cards means yeah. that things are working in conjunction for the playability of the game. Mm -hmm. Magic 30 does not change the playability of the game, nor no. will it. Yeah, it's very it's. I mean, it's going to be very simple. By the middle of next year, you won't have seen a Magic 30th edition card in play, and mm -hmm. you won't care, and yep. that'll be it. You'll never have to think about it again for the most part. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, that actually does it for all of the Magic the Gathering discussion for the past 365 days. I know we said we were going to look ahead at the end, but this episode is very, very long, so I'm just going to give a one-sentence thing that I'm looking forward to next year, and that's Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I me want too. Lord of the Rings Magic cards. I'm really excited to see what they do with it, given how well Warhammer did, and I do love Lord of the Rings as well. So what I think character are you most excited to, oh, you know, hopefully man. build a deck around? Oh. Shadow facts. Shadow oh. facts. Oh. <laughs> Oh, Rachel wins. Wow. Sorry, I want a Gandalf flip card. Ooh. You know? Or Balrog. I want to play a Balrog. Oh, Balrog Ooh, was Balrog mine. Is yeah. 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 Cool. Holy moly. How about you, Rachel? What are you most excited for for Magic in 2023? I love Universes Beyond. I, I agree that that's some of the most exciting stuff that's coming out. And I think it's such a cool response that like players were making custom cards with their like, you know, right. avatar cards for, for themselves. And now Wizards is like supporting that and, and expanding on that love of the game. And I think that's really exciting and fun. Um, um, Any of the best designers. So does that mean Doctor Who is what you're looking forward to? I'm <laughs> not a Doctor Who person, but Lord of the Rings is uh, is one I'm very excited about. And I'm excited to see what they do in the secret layers coming forward, you know? Yeah. Cool. And you got some of the best designers in the world working on this game. So yeah. that's, again, we have not seen that many bands in cards. So that means that they're doing a good job making them. Good job, Gavin. Good, jo good job, Gavin. <laughs> it's all you, Gavin. Mark Rosewater, if you're listening, it's all Gavin's fault. <laughs> uh, I'm excited for the magic cons um yeah, oh, yeah. it's four right. of them mm -hmm. and if you haven't heard we are going to be doing game nights live at philadelphia Ooh. so i'm really excited to do that show again but m more excited even just to get out there again and, and interact with the community that east was really coast especially yeah mm -hmm. and east we have midwest we haven't done east coast stuff in fact right before the pandemic if you go back to 2019 on our year in review one of the things we said we were going to do for 2020 one of our resolutions was go to an east coast event because uh -huh. we knew that we just hadn't interacted with the fans out there as much and then of course pandemic happened and we, we never were able to do it so we're going to finally fulfill that promise three years later um so yeah come out and see us at philly for sure but i'm just looking forward to just getting back to that world and being able to do that a little bit more next year so yeah making games and making friends all right to the listeners what were your favorite moments in magic from 2022 what was your favorite Set. How do you define <laughs> set? What was your favorite piece of uh, Command Zone content, maybe? Yeah, we yeah. did a lot of stuff, a lot of yeah. skits, a, a lot of game year. nights. Big yeah. year. Rachel's joined us. That's my favorite piece of Command Who's your Zone. favorite <laughs> host? Oh, <laughs> oh man. Jimmy. Well, where's your favorite place to buy cards, everybody? Oh, I know Easy. mine. I know mine, too. <laughs> it's Innistrad Double Feature from cardkingdom.com slash command. That's right. That's our affiliate link. We talked about a lot of stuff today. There's a good chance you didn't know something came out. Jumpstart. Hey, get some of those packs. Play them. I've seen some people play. They looked really fun mm -hmm. and some really powerful commanders there. Go to cardkingdom.com slash command. They have all the magic product you need. A huge warehouse filled with tons of cards at every different quality level. So you can really choose how to buy a full deck or even parts of a deck and have it arrive in a single order. We love Card Kingdom. They got great customer service. So check them out. Cardkingdom.com slash command for all of your magic card needs. Yeah, and go to ultrapro.com slash command to pick up Do some it. of the playmats and deck boxes and sleeves that you need to protect the cards and the many, many decks you built this year. I assume you built all 383 <laughs> decks. <laughs> if you did, send us a picture, please. Yeah, yeah. One, I want to see them. They better be an Ultra Pro product. Um, <laughs> That's a lot of satin towers. That's if a lot. there was a commander that you came to love over the year, go check their website. See if you can get a playmat to, su to support. Rep your guy, rep your gal. Or just uh, buy Ultra Pro product at your LGS. Always have to yeah. make sure people know that that is also supporting the show. 
Absolutely. And if there's anything missing from your LGS, go to their website at ultrapro.com slash command because uh, they've got some cool stuff. Keep an eye on out for the secret lair uh, drops on for Yeah, mats. they definitely have yeah. exclusive and stuff, stuff there. Too. And they have a lot of deals, too, that just yeah. sort of pop up from yep. time to time because yep. they got to move in inventory, clear out space for other stuff. Mm-hmm. So you can catch some pretty sweet deals, pretty yeah, big discounts. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Big thanks to our amazing team here at the Command Zone who've worked so hard this entire year to bring out more content than we've ever released before. Damon Lenz, Arthur Meadowcroft, Lady Danger, Manson Lung, Craig Blanchett, Josh Murphy, Jake Boss, Patrick Nan, Jordan Pridgen, Sam Waldo, Gaurav Galati, Jamie Block, Mitch Trafford, Evan Limberger, Gabriel Pozos, Megan Yip, and Eric Lem. Please give a shout out in the comments. Give some appreciation to our entire crew. You don't see them on camera all the time, although we have them on sometimes, but they really work super hard to bring all the content and you know it's the end of the year i think it's a it's a good time to give them a little shout and make Woo-hoo! sure they know you love them <laughs> thanks everybody who stuck with us through 2022 we will see you very soon in bye 2023 bye. peace peace For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs>